Sometimes I feel like we living in the last hours. As the days of Noah were, you gon' see the same time. People eating, marrying, and drinking in his end time. She done took too many bottles, bottles for that strong wine. Next day, do it all again, call it rewind. If you don't repent, you be in the lake of fire, burning like a stove, oven, microwave, curling mine. Proverbs chapter 3 and 5, I'm trusting in you, y'all, to make my path straight. Know you directing mine. Who is this from Boulder Rook? Like you pressing wine. Yeah, how was shot clothes looking like it's red eyes? Yeah, I can't stand you if you spit in Jewish fable lies. I can't stand you if you revelations to a nine. We gotta soap it down, get up out of cloud nine. So he can gather the disperse, check the enzyme. Lay another freak, freak, but it's full of beast, sodomized, tribulation here. Now you traumatized. I'm, I'm, I'm just giving you some school shooting precepts. Columbine, yeah. what are those giving, sucking them days, pacified, right yeah. twigs, love and hate, used to be a thin line, now it's hate, overflow, flood, and be for your eyes, yeah. I'd rather be like the one grinding at the mill, not the one was taken, but the one who stayed still, two in the field, when Noah got to speaking, all he did was keep it real, and he was very clear, they didn't want to hearken, until that rain came, and gave them all chills, at the end drawing near, they sounding off the trumpets, and when that seven blow, I pray it's music to my ears, like it's music to my ears, sometimes I feel like we living in the last hour, sometimes I Sometimes I feel like we living in the last hours. Sometimes I feel like we living in the last hours. Sometimes I feel like we living in the last hours. Sometimes I feel like we living in the last hours. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like we living in the last hours. Where's the crying out in the street? I hear the more. Where's the crying out in the street? I hear the more. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Watch this. Listen. Hey, where's them crying out in the street? I hear them more. Valley and dry bones. I'm talking skeletal, sword drawn. He man, I'm no longer a boy. Mature, did away with the bull like Matador. Give an ear, that's wisdom coming through metaphor. I metaphor the purpose to get through heaven's door. And my Jew, duh, like tribe number four. Time heal all wounds, now watch the bird soar. Another bread tape, this time I'm reloaded. Spiritual man, there ain't no way in hell is getting molded. Shout out Yahweh Elohim, I'm the one that's molded. They be the potter, I'm the clay, I feel like Thompson on them. Warrior, splash, brother, cup runneth over. Gotta embrace your brother's spirit when it's broken. Yeah, I will watch my sister like a roly. Wicked man shooting shots in her inbox, she turned to a goalie. If you don't work, you don't eat, time for aerobics. Religion got your clothes mad, the brain claustrophobic. Scripture say it's a prophet coming like unto Moses. Pastor say it's a prophet coming in pocket swollen. And God he trusts dirty money, I'm so germaphobic. Leviticus, chapter 20, homophobic. Tassel gang. Do what we can like pop soda Record pits on the African because they sold us yeah. Four corners where the children scatter Angels got them And they gon' bring the winds low Family matters I'm waiting for the return of the second atom Let your ladder rain fall while I'm climbing up the ladder Sometimes I feel like we Where's I'm crying now in the street? I hear the mourn valley of dry bones, skeletal, sword drawn, he man, no longer a boy, mature, dead away with the bull, not a door, give an ear, that's wisdom coming through metaphor, metaphor, the purpose to get through heaven's door, and my Jew, Doug, tribe number four, time here, law wounds, now watch the bird soar. We're the crying now in the street, I hear the more valley of dry bones, skeletal, sword drawn, heat man, no longer a boy, mature, dead away with the four, out of door, give a hear, that's wisdom coming, the metaphor, metaphor.
for the purpose to get the letters on in my jukebox. Time number four. Time to hit long wounds. I watch the first song. I'm a little sick, you probably can tell, all right, okay, all right, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever, my young I say you should drop a chat like Kendrick DNA, Kendrick DNA. the black be going crazy every time the most we play, what's we'll in your DNA, do the rhyme and me and that, and won't be iterate, once they search the scriptures every day, no demons and angels, spiritual battle every day, there's darkness, negativity, anger in your face, who the potter, who the clay, who stay firm, who go astray, just seen a Christian, he told me that we say under Grace, guess it's time to educate, fellowship, congregate, talking toward, meditate, Joshua verse 1 and 8, man shot down, now it's prayer, hands, sad emoji face, my children look like me, my DNA all in their face is crazy, we are the children made in the image to raise a child, it's gonna take a village, train up a child, tell them keep the law, everything you say be lies, gimmicks, I am the black sheep to the fam, my message is in the spam, yeah I was shot, left out like a lamb, coming back like a lion, damn, living water bus right through the damn Let's drink, have some offs with my brothers, work that out like Billy Blanks. Niggas be blind, throwing shade when they hurt in window paint. Drinking rejoice in my crib, watching Cradle to the Grave. That's a movie, don't you condemn me. It's four scenes, was blind, double minded, call of duty, split screen. Whole duty is to keep the law. The what? Fit Elohim, sharper than a two edged sword. That's the word, guillotine. My bad. We talking DNA. I got a question. Who yeah. got the truth in they DNA? Watch them. Do not answer. Judah Hello? roused up like a lion. Do not amp them. Made a turn them just to catch them. They end up catching tensions. DNA catch them. double A. That's drugs and alcohol. Right before destruction. Hardy spirit right before a fall. Deacons and apostles. I just got done reading books of Paul. Mix it with some words of Mashiach, prophets, and the law. DNA. D is for doctor. N is for novice. H stand for abomination. Woe to the folly. My Ali said he got an open mind like a lobby running fast. Trying to keep up with the pace like copy. I got demons trying to watch me. And too bad they can't copy. If it don't fit. It must have quit. I feel like Johnny yeah, Cocker like and Elohim who let your ladder rain. Fall Mary Poppins, oh, long yeah, hair, pop. don't care. I feel like Pimpy, long stocking. Hey, losers not an option. Loses no not scripture option. is a topic. I be shooting to them precepts. Houston Rockets. Houston Rockets. This is something I go hard in. No flopping. And bring it to your block. Big Chuck Beats knocking. Yeah. Knocking. Yeah. The mean it's at 808. No, you cannot purchase this on a layaway. I'm about to be a light to the streets, sort of looking like back breaks. Man, I'm tired of working for this land, and the white man made my back ache. Yeah. Man, I'm tired of working for this land, and the white man made my back ache. About to poke holes in your doctor, now you walk around like milk crates. Did it? Did it? Reload it. Reload it.
This is the end zone. You heed the know at the end hole. We see the light ever since we came across this info. I'm a Bible near foe. This is for my kinfo. This word will slap you harder than Kimbo with some Tim's on. They nervous now. This is sudden death and we ain't bringing no punters out. Fourth down, no timeouts. The time is now. We in they red zone. Looking like the Chiefs with all this red on. It's Red Chef. And this here is the Wicked Dead Zone. It's getting close. So one more touchdown and it's over. Your heart will never miss a perfect throw and then check a wide open. For the tribe of the team, what we doing? Sweep on the wings. Your sword is the quarterback. I call that a holy screen. Your sword will touch down. Watch the whole nation scream. This is for Israel. So no mercy to the other team. Chill. And that's the way that it got to be. The father is the power of a source like a battery. You can't get me out of my zone. Hey. If I'm at the end zone, rain and fire and brimstone. Hey. That is your end zone. New Jerusalem, my home. Hey. That is the end zone. Hey. That is the end zone. Hey. That is the end zone. Can't get me out of my zone. Hey. If I'm in the end zone, rain and fire and brimstone. Hey. That is your end zone. New Jerusalem, my home. Yeah. Hey. That is the end zone. Hey. That is the end zone. Hey. That is the end zone. Hey. Yeah. New Jerusalem is the goal. Can't stop. Stop until I reach home, clearing up spirits, wiping out demons. That's the path to the end zone. Being led, yeah, I'm in the zone. Who are stretching me real long. Being tested, yeah, I'm real restless. Cause my dreams nesting all in my dome. Long time and I've been alone. Set apart, yeah, I'm real strong. Sacrificed and I paid the price for setting up a life that was well known. Spotlight had me cocky. cocky. Most high came and knocked me. Knocky. Set me down, had to be a crown. Then he turned around and gave me prophecies. Yo, I don't deserve it. Don't deserve but the it. most high, I'm a servant. Yeah, I am a I'm not worthy. But my DM worthy. be saying I'm perfect. Saying yeah, I'm uh, perfect. people are worthy. People I'm repenting from all emotion. All yeah, emotion. Uh, I'm not sturdy. Cause my family sturdy. be doing me dirty. Yeah, nah. keep the laws while it's in your face. Then all the pain he will he erase. Zone. That is love, don't call it grace. He the only way to guarantee you safe. Zone. Make the choice to stay in place. So all this power you can he embrace. Zone. Lies told all in your face. You're a Hebrew, black's not a race. Yeah. 24 hours, just give me a minute. Like hand gesture, yeah. do hesitate. I get like 24 in them final seconds. Oh. You two undercover. Danny Glover, script, lethal weapon. Script. This for all of my bros. Had to start from scratch like broken records. Broken. I'm strapped up with the armor on. Armor all, protection. Yeah. I say time wanna be the plug with no power, disconnection, no. planting seeds, putting bugs in your ear to make you go against brethren, disinfected, real easy for the pride to rise like that resurrection, you only get one shot in this lifetime, I'm at the foul line, no clear zone, we at the end zone, you stuck at the power line, I believe one day we gonna be gathered from the four corners, power line, where there be no more darkness. The opposite of clap on. Now clap your hands like Patty Cake. Don't drop the ball. Bad fumble and celebrate. Cause we done been from Jacob's well to Jacob's struggle. You, you, you gotta remain humble. And we gotta pray that we not in jeopardy of the second death. Alice Shabbat, daily double. You can't get me out of my zone. If I'm at the end zone, rain and fire and brimstone. That is your end zone. New Jerusalem, my home. That is the end zone. That is the end zone. That is the end zone. Can't get me out of my zone. If I'm in the end zone, rain and fire and brimstone. That is is your end zone, New Jerusalem, my home. Hey. That is the end zone. Hey. That is the end zone. Hey. That is the end zone, yeah. End zone. End zone. End zone.
Shabbat Shalom, family. We live. Shabbat Shalom. Good to see everybody here today. We're going to have another great Sabbath day, as always. Great, holy day. It feels so good to be back. Yeah, it can. Absolutely. A day of feasting, fellowship, a day to get into these scripts. To learn the truth of the Almighty that the Almighty has for us. Um, a day about brotherhood, sisterhood, a day about love, which is the second greatest commandment, how we must love each other. And that's an action word. So you can't love in word and not in deed. You know what I'm saying? Your actions show by your fruits, you shall know them. So um, we're going to go ahead and get started for today. And again, Shabbat Shalom. We all have a great, great Sabbath day. Um, we can all rise, face Jerusalem. I'm going to blow the shofar seven times. I rock. Get the prayer. I got you. Yeah. Kingdom come, thy will, will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Almighty Yahweh, we come before you today thanking you, humble, meek, thanking you for getting us through this week. Thank you for getting us through all the trials and tribulations and the turmoils that we faced. Thank you for maneuvering us through all the wickedness of this world. We thank you for your set apart Shabbat day, your day of rest, the day where we can just focus on you and we can forget about the woes of the world. Everybody is walking this walk singly individually and yet we all come together as one mishpachah to honor and reverence your name on your set apart shabbat day we ask that you cover all the ones that are in his in this building right now the ones that are watching online the ones that are on the way and the ones that want to be here but can't we ask that you cover the ones that are out of town that tune in just to try their best to keep your commandment and gather on your set apart day we ask you bless the leaders the teachers the readers the people that ask the questions, the people that answer the questions, the listeners, and more, and, and, and moreover, the doers of your word. But we know that the, the love that we show is in the, uh, our walk and our keeping of your laws, statutes, and commandments. We ask you to continue to bless us, bless our families, and bless all those we come in contact with. For you said to be a living sacrifice is just our reasonable duty. And in your son, Yahweh shall name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. All right, so if we could just go ahead and open up to the Ten Commandments, Book of Exodus, chapter 20. Exodus, chapter 20. 
Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 17. Once we there, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. So we'll go ahead and get started. The book of Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 17, and it reads, And Elohim spake all these words, saying, I am Yahweh thy Elohim, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other Elohim before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, Yahweh the Elohim, am a jealous Elohim, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me, keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of Yahweh the Elohim in vain, for Yahweh will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahweh the Elohim. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days Yahweh made the heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in the midst, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore Yahweh blessed the Shabbat day, and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which Yahweh thy Elohim giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shalom, y'all. Shalom, y'all. Uh, Zion. Uh, grab me, grab me a, a paper towel. Like, put, put a little water on there. A little hot water on the sprinkle. Get through. Get through. Get through. We got Leviticus 10, 11? Yep. 10? You said, yep. I said 10 or 11. You said, yep. <laughs> She's like, yep, it's one of them. <laughs> Quick answer. So my eye, how you doing, man? Brother here, okay, mm -hmm. man. Yeah, yeah. You got twenty. Hey, you got this. We don't do we don't have the roof. We got the other bit. Think in the bitch. Think in the bitch. Okay. I'd be better to do it as a roof though. Yeah. Yeah. I don't do it. Okay. I'm hoping okay. somebody check me uh, tonight. I'm a lion head. That's how good. It makes sense. <laughs> yeah, that's the best man. That's uh. So, who's the best man off the uh, off the wood? <laughs> Trey, <laughs> Trey, Trey did. I'm going off the wood. The best man was like a spinoff, <laughs> or the wood was a spinoff. One of. Them. We only got twenty verses, so ten and ten. Yeah. So, Started out. I'll finish up the last ten. Okay. All right. So uh, Leviticus ten. Once we there, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I heard one Hallelujah. Nobody else had Leviticus. There we go. We had two of them. All right. So the book of Leviticus, chapter ten. We uh, we got twenty verses in this one. Uh, so I'll read ten. And uh, my eye go go go. You know what? Boy, right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so wipe the sweat off this All right, so Leviticus chapter ten, and it reads, and Nate and Nadab and Abiel, sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer and put fire therein and put incense thereon and offered strange fire before Yahweh. Which he commanded them not. And there went out fire from Yahweh and devoured them, and they died before Yahweh. Then Moshe said unto Aaron, This is it that Yahweh spake, saying, I will be sanctified in them that come nigh me, 
before all the people I will glorify. And now Aharon held his peace. And Moshe called Mishael and Ilzephon, the sons of Uziel, the uncle of Aharon, and said unto them, Come near, carry your brethren from before the sanctuary out of the camp. So they went near and carried them in their coats out of the camp, as Moshe had said. And Moshe said unto Aharon, and unto Eliezer, and unto Ithamar, his sons, uncover not your heads, neither rend your clothes, lest ye die, and lest wrath come upon the people. But let your brethren, the whole house of Israel, bewail the burning which Yahweh hath kindled. And ye shall not go out from the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, lest ye die. For the anointing oil of Yahweh is upon you. And they did according to the word of Moshe. And Yahweh spake unto Aharon, saying, Do not drink wine, nor strong drink, thou nor thy sons with thee, when ye go into the tabernacle of the congregation, lest ye die. It shall be a statue forever throughout your generations, and that ye may put difference between holy and unholy, and between unclean and clean. Verse 11. And that ye may teach the children of Israel all the statutes which Yahweh have spoken unto them by the hand of Moses. And Moses spake unto Aaron, and unto Eleazar, and unto Ithamar, his sons that were left. Take the meat offering that remaineth of the offerings of Yahweh made by fire, and eat it without leaven beside the altar, for it is most holy. And ye shall eat it in the holy place because it is thy due and thy sons due of the sacrifices of Yahweh made by fire for so I am commanded and the wave breast and the heave shoulder shall ye eat in the clean in a clean place thou and thy sons and thy sons with thee for thy for they be thy due and thy sons due which are given out of the sacrifices of the peace offerings of the children of Israel. The heave shoulder and the wave breast shall they bring with the offerings made by fire of the fat to wave it for a wave offering before Yahweh. And it shall be thine and thy sons with thee by statue forever, as Yahweh have commanded. And Moses diligently sought the goat of the sin offer and behold it was burned and he was angry with Eleazar and Ithamar the sons of Aaron which were left alive saying wherefore have ye not eaten the sin offering in the holy place seeing it is most holy and Elohim have given it to you to bear the inequity of the children of the congregation to make an atonement for them before Yahweh Behold, the blood of it was not brought in within the holy place. Ye shall indeed have eaten it in the holy place, as I commanded. And Aaron said unto Moses, Behold, this day have thy offered their sin offering and their burnt offering before Yahweh. And such things have befallen me. And if I have eaten the sin offering today should I have been accepted in the sight of Yahweh. And when Moses heard that, he was content. Leviticus chapter 10. Yeah, a whole lot in there. Exactly. Hallelujah. So, any questions concerning the law portion? Leviticus chapter 10. Everybody see that? Then about six months from now, mm-hmm. we're gonna be talking about offerings and sacrifices, and people gonna say, I never knew they ate offerings and sacrifices. It's right here in this chapter, it happens all the time. It only comes up when something's gonna happen. Y'all gonna look on Facebook and somebody gonna see somebody said you ain't never supposed to eat the offerings. Right. And then y'all gonna come here and we'll be like, remember, we've been reading that for the past two years. That's all too Leviticus. 
Shoulder and the breath. All right, good. So we good? All right, cool. All right, so we're going to move on to uh, – we're going to move on to current events. You got some? Raise your hand. We're going to give a mic to the audience. In case y'all got something we need to know about, anything concerning prophecy, children of Israel, what's going on? Just bring it out. Bring it out before the people. Bring it out before the congregation. Bring it out before the nation. Bring it out before the world. We on www. means the world. Anybody in the world pretty much can hear us. Y'all don't got nothing. <laughs> you know, I will got some stuff for y'all. Go ahead, I got things on you. I ain't gonna bring nothing out because I know everything I'm gonna bring out. He gonna bring out, so I don't want to double it up. <laughs> uh, it's like this week, man. Uh, Shabbat Shalom to the family. Shabbat Shalom. Um, so of course, you know, I keep I keep you know digging and, and looking at things in regard to the Pope monster. So um Johnson and Johnson, they stopped producing it. Um they said that they're gonna focus on producing a more profitable uh Pope monster. So they're working on something that's supposedly gonna be more profitable because you know a lot of the issues and stuff folks had with Johnson and Johnson, they stopped producing and stopped making it and Folks started focusing on Moderna and uh, whatever the other one is, uh, Pfizer. Yeah, so, um, so that's what they're on. Hold on, hold on. Hey, y'all, this ain't our first Shabbat. It's been rustling, rattling, conversations, and all that. Kids, calm down. If you ain't with your parents, get with your parents. Parents, if you got your kids, get them together. If they can't get together, we got a room in the back. We've been doing this for years. Water. So um with Pfizer though, Pfizer they they put an application in so they could try to get the uh Pope Monster approved for kids five and under, but they actually withdrew it. So that's a positive, that's that's a win because that was their next aim was to try to put this stuff in these babies. So you know what I'm saying? Uh, it's a win for now. I mean, we know of course we know the end result what that's gonna be, but for now it's been delayed a little bit, you know. So I'll praise to the most high for that. Um, and so a couple of things I found that was interesting is that, uh, the largest, uh, the largest stockholder of Moderna also is one of the largest stockholders of, of Spotify. So if you understand, you know, a lot of this stuff, you just follow the money and you see, you know what I'm saying? What, what people heads is at. And so, um, I mean, for me, I had Spotify as one of my, um, you know, things I was listening to in regards to my music outlet, but I went ahead and, and closed that down. So I kind of found out Spotify is behind a lot of wicked stuff, man. Um, but of course, you know, just do your research on that if that's something that you're interested in. The other thing that I have is um, I know y'all been y'all been kind of seeing Russia and China and and all of that getting ready to pop off. So. Yeah, so <laughs> so uh, slow mo Joe, he um he issued a warning to those Americans who's currently in Russia or Ukraine to leave. So he was being interviewed by somebody in um uh, uh, and so he said it's not it's not likely that we're dealing with a terrorist organization, or it's not like we're dealing with a terrorist organization. We're dealing with one of the largest armies in the world. It's a very different situation and things could go crazy very quickly. So then the interviewer basically asked, like, what scenario will prompt him to send troops into uh, Russia to rescue Americans fleeing Russia? And he said, we ain't doing that. If anybody's stuck in Russia, that's just you just stuck in Russia. He ain't going to rescue nobody. So we kind of see this stuff mounting and building and building. Um, and this is one of the things that kind of keep an eye on because we know um, we know war is on the horizon. It's just a matter of time. Um, but Joe ain't going to rescue nobody. So whoever over in Russia, get your tail back over here, or it's, 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 it's going to be grace and peace. So um, that's really all I got. I don't know why I can. I might be off deck for this. I don't really see too many hard people just sitting in Russia right now. Like, just, nah. Yeah. Nah. Just DMs. Yeah. They blend in. They eye. 
gonna be good. Put a little extra spit in the back of your throat. <laughs> you, know, you, mean, you fit right in. You be yeah, outside. Yeah. You smooth. Anybody, anybody else got anything to say to our current events? All right, sure. Hey, Aki. I'm gonna say this correctly, but um, yeah, Biden uh, approved or some his administration about giving uh, crack pipes to uh, yeah uh, to the drug addicts. So I thought that was a little. So he said he want to balance. No, you bring that up. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh uh, yeah, he he said it was about you know balancing the the equity. Racial equality. Racial equality. But here's my thing. The mission was to take a portion of this $30 million budget to produce the crack pipes and send them to underprivileged neighborhoods, a.k.a. black neighborhoods. But you put more crack pipes to, to, for a healthier crack consumption. You put more crack pipes in the hood, you stricken the laws on distribution of narcotics, and then you flood these neighborhoods with police officers, and you lock us up, but you're condoning the use of drugs. You're perpetuating the continued use of drugs in our communities. You didn't send these to upper-class neighborhoods because you felt like they didn't need them. Don't nobody need no crack pipe. Mm -hmm. That and, and I and I just saw that I didn't see crack. I didn't see crack pipe. I saw I saw lock them up. Yeah. I saw another vortex. If any of y'all was around in in, in, the, in the early 2000s <laughs> when they did the vortex downtown, they started down by the stadium. They put all the troops down there and they sent them right up every street. Exactly. But what's crazy is he told us he, he told us if you don't vote if you don't vote for us. You ain't black. So, I mean, our people was just, we put so much hope and so much faith in this, in this voting process. And it's one of the things where it ain't benefited us. It ain't never going to benefit us. You know what I'm saying? So we got to, we got to look for an alternative, man, because this voting stuff ain't working. It ain't work. I don't know where, uh, where Kamala Berry is. Bruh. She got an office in Hey, hey, what's, what's that TikTok? I don't do nothing at work. I don't, do, I don't never do nothing at work. Yeah. Yeah. She clocked in and, and got, went on break. Bro, ghost, you hear me? But, but, but what's crazy is you have a lot of our sisters, man, they so happy. They putting the chucks on with the pearls and they can't believe it's the first African-American woman in office and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, bro, ain't benefiting Nathaniel. Ain't benefited right. nothing and ain't going to. You know what I'm saying? So and uh, the one thing I see that come out a lot about that is a lot of our people jump out and be like, this who y'all voted for, this is who y'all wanted in office. And it's like, so y'all wanted the other one. At the end of the day, it was a lose-lose. It's always a lose-lose. Because no, nobody that goes into that seat ever benefits us. And anytime anybody gets in that seat and tries to benefit us, they block it. It's a lose-lose. That's why I always say we can hope, we can pray, we can wish. At the end of the day, we ain't coming out from under these curses. Under no way, shape, or form are we coming out from under these curses. Slow. <laughs> now, he um, he did really have a point. He was doing it for racial equity. No, it's not quote unquote it is. It's because all the white people are stuck on this opioid epidemic. And the black people, it's our parents that was on the crack. It's not us. <laughs> so he trying to even up the odds. It's, no, my kids yeah. are great kids. Is on this opioids now. They no black people are rising. No. Yeah. You get yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anything else, y'all? 
So then they set up like some centers, like in New York and places like that where they could go and smoke. What? Yeah, that's what I heard. So so they got like, so if you were on like meth or something like that, then you could go to these like, I forget what they call them, they're like a center and they'll give you your drug, they'll give you something to smoke it out of and stuff like that. And then you could go about your business. Like they're not even gonna lock you up or nothing like that. You could just go there and house. smoke. Yeah, yeah. Government crack issue crack house pretty pretty much. And so um say it again. I don't know if they buying it. I don't know if they buying it or they getting it for free. I didn't get that far out of what I heard, but I know they got place they could go and do their drugs and then just go about it. But they're not getting arrested or anything. You know what I'm saying? It's just and they said they want them to have a safe place to do it. As opposed to being on the streets and anything can happen, you might get shot, you might get anything. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I've been uh, hearing throughout the week. They don't so care where they doing here. it. It's a spot here in the city, um, up the street from Tri County on 747. If you're going north, where uh, for people who are on op opioids, you can go in there, and their objective is to wean you off. So it's like every time you go in there, like you get less and less of you know what I'm saying, the opioid. To, to, to wean off. I don't know anybody who's been successful at, you know what I'm saying, coming full off, but it is a spot over there to your point. Um, but also to that point, I seen on uh, on CNN where uh, Slow Mo Joe, he, um, he basically waved a white flag to the cartels. So whatever else is coming in here, uh, he basically done bowed the knee to the cartel. So if you see anything, you know what I'm saying, on, on, on the internet in regard to uh, increase of any type of drug activity, that's why. Because he done, he done bowed the knee to the cartel. So. And then I think they even mentioned COVID about this too. Like, you know, they throw COVID in everything. It's like, we want you to be safe. I guess you're going to get COVID while you're smoking on the streets. Right. You know what I'm here. You know what I'm saying? It's like... You could do math, we just don't want you to get COVID. Right. I think smoking meth is way worse than getting COVID. Way worse. Way worse. All right, y'all. Anything else before we move on? All right, cool. Well, that's it. Current events. I ain't got nothing up here. Whoopi. Hello, right? Oh, oh yeah. I ain't hear nobody bring that out. Yeah, Whoopi Goldberg. Yeah. She ain't even say nothing for real. So what about that situation? <laughs> so I heard what she said. She said it wasn't about a race issue. It was a uh, like a human issue, like people just being bad to other people. And in her mind, she thought it wasn't about a race issue because she looked at the Holocaust as, as white people doing things to other white people. You know what I'm saying? And so I understand what she's saying. I understand the other side too. We can see where it is a race thing. Because just because you're both white doesn't mean you're the same race. Right. You know what I'm there's white Russians, there's white Germans, there's white Italians, but you know what I'm saying? So she was just like, to her, it's not a race thing. It's just a people being bad to other people thing. Because if you look at them, you really can't tell the difference. Like the only reason you would know if this person is in Judaism if they got on one of them little hats yeah. or if they got on some fringes or something, they got to do it in their clothing. If they just wear a regular suit like the next white guy and nothing else, you wouldn't know if they was Italian or if they were German or if they were, you know what I'm saying? Or if they were um, um, Turkish, Khazars or whatever, like you wouldn't know the difference. You know what I'm saying? And so to her point, there was nothing mean or malicious said about the people. You know what I mean? But you see what happens though. They quickly shut her down, quickly suspend her. They ain't take no time. But at the same time, if you compare it to uh, the other guy, since we talking about current events, uh, y'all know who uh, Joe Rogan is? Yeah. Y'all heard what he said. You know what I'm saying? He called black people a bunch of niggers. He compared going to the inner city ghettos as like the planet of the apes. And he's still rolling. He's still going on the show. You don't nobody shut him down. You know what I'm saying? So it just is what it is. It's something to, to compare and contrast. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead, sister. I'm just glad that um, after I saw her interview, I don't know if it, what talk show she went on. It was a late night show, though. But um, I'm glad she didn't do the Nick Cannon. 
she said what she said. She like, well, if y'all was mad about it, that wasn't my intention. I just said it was white people doing stuff to other white people. When you see a black person, no, she said something like, when the KKK is coming down the road, I'm with my Jewish friend. I got to run. They'll be fine. And that's true. So she was like, um, pretty much to end it, she like, I just put talking about it. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nick Cannon tucked his tail in. Ooh. Hey, Nick Cannon was spitting truth too on that thing. Man, he was, cool. was spitting straight oh. truth. Then he came back. Right. <laughs> then they come back. Then they got an interview one of them. Like, oh, I didn't know. Man, I'm he trying come, to understand. He come back. He got. He cut. He went. He 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 came. He went out. A strong black man with with his head wrapped up, talking that talk. He came back with lupus, uh, <laughs> wearing pink suits. He got his hair cut different. He ain't wrapped his head up since. He he been real nice to to white folk. It's funny. He had the whole. He had all the all the people was behind him. Whole family. He held it down. Boom boom boom. <laughs> Wilding out got pulled off the air. Yeah, because we know said, I'm home. sorry. While it out came on that Sunday, <laughs> yeah. he had a he got a talk show now. He got to interview one of the Jewish people. Like, bro, like you just it's it's all the rewards and the spoils is back now that you done said you sorry and yeah, I ain't know. You know, I just gotta I gotta do more research and you know I gotta be more considerate of uh, cry loud and spare no. Uh, it's crazy, man. Because at the end of the day, bro, like I'm just listening to what everybody's saying, and I'm like, it's just a distraction. Like, it's pointless to even talk about, bro. Because that's exactly what they want. They want people to be talking about meaningless stuff so they can work on what they really, really working on. You feel what I'm saying? That's why I be telling my people, like, man, turn that garbage off. Exactly. I don't care about what Whoopi said. I don't care about like none of them crack pipes that they because it's a distract. It don't matter. In the in the grand scheme of what they really really working on, it's just to get people focused on this that to take us off of what we really need to be locked in on. Period. It's just like when they be at work looking at TikTok stuff. I'm looking at grown women like y'all for real. Mm -hmm. This is what, bro. None of this is important, bro. These doctors talking about it, like it don't matter. Where is your soul at, bro? What are you yeah. on when you leave here? Like, if you get into a car crash, where is your soul going, bro? Don't none of this matter. But the next five to seven minutes of your life, what are you on? What is your thought process? How much time have I given you? How did how did I wake up today? Was my mind on hell? When I was in my whip going to work, what was my mind at? What what's my head space right now? This week was an eye opener for me because every day I went to work, a different person asked me about my tasks. It's been it ain't been like this in a while, but every single day I was at work, somebody different was asking. It put a whole not not that I'm saying I don't be off deck or none of that, but this week was just it was my the spiritual sense was heightened. Like what is going on? Like I'm rocking these every day. This ain't ain't nothing changed. You feel what I'm saying? Asking, asking. I'm sitting there talking to this 45 minutes and it went by. And I'm like, so hold on. Well, well, what's really important though? I gave out the address to like five different people. Please pull up. Like, no, for real. Yeah. Cause now that we done had this conversation, like your accountability is on a whole nother. So what are we really doing? What are we really talking about? Are we wasting words in our conversations? Like, what's really important? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna shut up though. You got it more right. I'm just that's just where I'm at right now mentally. What are we on? What's important? Bump all that because we already know who we are. We know that they know. We know that the masses don't know. So I think. For today, I mean, it's it's about hyper focus. I wouldn't, I, I didn't get here on time. Apologize for that to pray, but it's about hyper focus, hyper awareness spiritually. Because you talk about judgment being accelerated, righteous judgment being accelerated. We need to be hyper focused, bro. 
That's all I got for current events, though. If that was even a current event. Hey, to to land back on what you said, twin. So I was I was on lunch break this week, and I was going somewhere. Matter of fact, I was going to the gas station, grab me something, grab me a little cake or something. You know what I'm saying? Get my energy up. I was depleted. Nah, nah, nah. I want to look that. Nah, nah. I'm still locked in. Um. So I was at the stoplight. Light turned green. I'm getting ready to turn. Bro, all of a sudden, I see this this car, bro. When I see this car, I had to have been doing like 90. I normally, I don't normally speed to the, this right there. So I'm just about to casually turn. I'm listening to my music or whatever. Phew! So then I'm like, okay. I hit the brake. I'm looking. It was another car coming. This car had to have been doing like 60. My man's is out the, out the window of the car. Like he had the thing on it. Oh. So I'm like, oh, he was getting chased because he was, I ain't never seen that. He was flying. Mm. I'm like, bro, I'm so glad I ain't speed back. Oh, he would have, bro, I would have got, bro. Mm. That would have been ugly. You know what I'm saying? And he was getting chased. And so when I got my, after I left the gas station, I'm on my way back to the house, I clock back in. Dude is circling the hood. He's circling. I'm like, yeah, he was getting chased, bro. He was getting chased. But it just goes to show like, not that I was a real, um, not that I had road rage or anything, but like it just pays to be patient, bro. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? It just pays to be patient because mm-hmm. I did not see that car, it, bro. 90 on Reddit, yeah, nah. And my man's is out the car, like, bro, he was about like if he had that on him, he and I believe shoot. he did, he, to he was gonna start dumping, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So, bro, like, I mean, all praise to the most high for just being patient. Which is one of the fruit of the spirit, by the way. But yeah, that that was crazy. Ready to get into it up? Yeah. All right, y'all. So, hey, if y'all quiet down. Some of the children can go to the back room. Keep everything quiet. We about to go ahead and get into the word. I got Haran going to bring y'all some uh, a good lesson for us today. So everybody, be in tune, be attentive. Take notes if you need to, however you need to remember it, because a lot of these things come up from time to time. You know what I'm saying? They always come up from time to time. And what y'all don't realize is one lesson connects to the other. In order for you to have an overall understanding of the scriptures in its totality, one lesson be connected to another, be connected to another, be connected to another. Sometimes if you miss maybe the third lesson, you don't make the connection, and then you be confused. Like, what is this? How do I do this? You know what I'm saying? So, again... It's about your salvation. We teach in this truth because this truth is what leads to salvation. This truth is what leads to eternal life. And we're given the path. It's a straight and narrow path that we must follow to lead to eternal life. Right? Broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And narrow is the way that leadeth to eternal life. So we got to follow that narrow path, that narrow way. And the totality of these scriptures and the understanding of them as a whole is what leads to that. When you miss something here and there, then the connection is not made. Then the next thing you know, since the connection wasn't made, then you don't know something, then you figure, hey, maybe this don't matter, and that don't matter. Next thing you know, you're back at the Baptist church. Boy. How do you go from being in the truth Sam. to being in the Baptist church? Boy. Which teaches no commandments, which Revelation 22 and 14 says, blessed are those that keep his commandments, that they can have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates of the city. What city? The holy city, New Jerusalem. That's our eternal dwelling place. When you eat from the tree of life, that means you live forever. But what did it say? How do you get to eat from the tree of life? How do you get to live in the holy city? Keep his commandments. No Christian church keeps his commandments. Therefore, there is no salvation inside of those places. We just got to take it for what it is. Sin is the transgression of the law. We know all the laws. We talk about them all the time. Don't take them lightly. The new moon is a law. We have half the people here on new moons than we do on the Sabbath day. It's a law. Most of y'all are not working. Most of y'all don't have a good excuse not to be here on the new moon. But every month, it's like double the people on the Sabbath day, and it's half of that on the new moon. We talk about things on the new moon that we don't talk about on the Sabbath days. 
And if you've been here for two years and you never came to a new moon, you'd be like, oh, I didn't even know y'all was doing that. Like literally, you know what I mean? I didn't even know y'all had a plan for this and that. I didn't even know we had a plan for X, Y, and Z. Yeah. So we're not saying these words in vain. The Almighty's word don't come back void. Like when we bring forth certain lessons, a lot of times they be for a reason. Sometimes we just kind of picked a lesson. Sometimes the spirit led us to teach about a certain thing. Sometimes we know what's going on in the world and we feel like we need to equip y'all with this. And then next thing you know, it come down the pipe and nobody know what to do. And we like, we've been telling you about this. We just did a lesson five months ago about that. It should have been in you by now. All right, it's on you up. Yep. Hallelujah. So um, it's crazy that you said that as far as like the lessons connecting with each other, because um, at the point of what I was going to bring out, uh, I just switched it up. Um, I had some over me like to switch it up a little bit. And what I'm going to be dealing with is kind of going to um, be connecting to some of the things that we talked and brought out in the past. And it's going to be able to help your um, your dialogue, your conversations when you're dealing with like non-Messianics, when you're dealing with Christians, when you're dealing with anybody, even in the, on, on this side of the spectrum. So what we're dealing with today is um, the sovereignty of your house. Most people, when you talk to them, they try to put the most high the almighty in a box. Um, I myself have never been one to do that because I understand that the almighty is just like any um, household that's ran by a woman and a man or a man and woman, a father and mother. The almighty is just like that. The scriptures say it's a family in heaven. When you start to understand the dynamics of them four letters right there, you start to understand, wait a minute, the, um, the Mashiach opposed the prayer and he said, when you pray, pray like this. And one thing that I, that one key thing that I took out of there was on earth as it is in heaven, which it should be as it is in heaven, so shall it be on the earth because the heavens come first. The kingdom is first and then everything should mimic that just as it did in the times past, just as it's still doing. So um, is the almighty sovereign? I'm going to just go on record and say yes. I'm not going to ask no questions because it's rhetorical to me. It's rhetorical to the Almighty. He is sovereign. He can do whatever he want to do. But most people, when you're dealing with like non messianics they're going to tell you the Almighty. Um, it's almost like a contradiction. In one breath, they'll tell you the Almighty can do what he, what he want. But then in another breath, they'll go to a scripture and say, the Almighty didn't do this. What do you mean? Um, so where we want to go real with this? Um, let's open up in the book of Daniel. And if you ever had um, a question concerning this, you about to get your answer. If you was always on the side of the spectrum, um, seeing it from the point of view that the Almighty is not sovereign, because when you read scriptures, it said he rested on the Shabbat day, and you thought to yourself when you read it, he had to also honor the Sabbath. He doesn't. He only rested because he finished all his work. The Almighty is a spirit. Scripture said he's a spirit and they must they that worship him must worship him in what spirit and truth. But he don't got to rest. He don't got to eat. Um, what about um, when the scripture says who can turn an unclean thing into a clean thing? None of us can go to the dead carcass of a pig and make it clean. But the almighty can. Um, all right. So where we at? Let's go to Daniel chapter four. And let's just read verses 31 through 35. 34 through 35. My bad. Uh, this is the book of Daniel, chapter 4, verses 34 through 35. My bad. I, 31 through 35. 1 through 35. <clears throat> While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee, and they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with beasts of the field. <clears throat> they shall make thee eat grass as oxen, and seven times shall pass over thee, until thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. 
the same hour, he was the thing fulfilled upon. Well, Salika, the same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar, and he was driven from men, and did eat grass as oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till his hairs were grown like eagles' feathers, and his nails like birds' claws. And at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and mine understanding returned unto me. And I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored him that, lift, that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing, and he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth, and none can stay his hand or say unto him, what doest thou? So it's some um, great little poetic um, scriptures that we just read, right? Who is Nebuchadnezzar? King of Babylon. So how much more are we to say the Almighty can't do something if that which is Nebuchadnezzar, who is the king of Babylon, who was brought very low? The Almighty made him eat grass. The Almighty made him look like a beast in a field. He brought a king who kings are sovereign. Kings can tell their soldiers to go how far they want them to go, to fight how long, whatever. They're sovereign in their own right. The um, Nebuchadnezzar had enough sense to say the Almighty um, has dominion over the earth and is from everlasting. Then he asked the question at the end of verse 35. This is real key. Um, I'm going to read 35 again. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. And he does according to his will um, in the army of heaven. So he's talking about the Almighty doing according to his will and among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can stay his hand or say unto him, what doest thou? So he said, nobody, whether you're in the heavens or whether you're on the earth, can ask the question, what are you doing? You will be destroyed right before you stand. All right. Um, so we see that. Let's go to the book of Psalms 135. So we just open it up, paint, paint a little picture, and then we're going to start getting into some um, meaningful scriptures. Psalms 135. Let's just get verse 5 through 8. The book of Psalms, chapter 135, verses 5 through 8, and it reads, For I know that Yahweh is great, and that our Master is above all Elohim. Whatsoever Yahweh pleased, that did he in heaven, in earth, in the seas, in all deep places, he causeth the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He maketh lightnings for the rain. He bringeth the wind out of the treasuries who smote the firstborn of Egypt, both of man and beast. So um, y'all seeing everything that we know of, right? Self-explanatory, the Almighty doing all these things, um, causing the thunders, the rain and all this stuff to ascend and bring forth, right? But verse number eight, who smote the firstborn of Egypt, both man and beast. Now, to most people, the next scripture that we're going to go to is a law. To most non-Messianics, when we read through this scripture, we see it from two different point of views. They'll read this scripture and say, um, your Messiah didn't come and die. Why? Because when we read this law, this law was given to um, Israel. But this law also means that no man can die for your sins. But when we look at it from the perspective of the Almighty, you start to understand why we're saying without a shadow of a doubt that he's sovereign and he the one that's causing this up and doing whatever he want to do. Because who can ask them, what are you doing? If the almighty is spreading the, the, the clouds of heaven and, you know, doing all these different things and making these constellations, how can you question some of the, you know, lesser matters or even some of the weightier matters? How can you question anything that the almighty is doing? Uh, if you can't fathom how um, the clouds are moving, how the sun is rising. You can't even fathom none of that, but you're questioning all this other stuff. All right, so now let's go to a law that they will go to, Deuteronomy 24 and 16. And we may have to read it a couple times because um, it can kind of confuse you 
how they would read it and how they would um interpret it. All right. So Deuteronomy 24 and 16. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 24, verse 16, and it reads, The fathers shall not be put to death for their children, neither shall the children be put to death for their fathers. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. So what we just read in Psalms 135 would contradict this, right? Because it said the firstborn was killed, both man and beast. And if we know anything about that story, why were they killed? For the sins of what Pharaoh did. So someone else was killed for somebody else's sins. And they will go here to rectify. That's how we know your Mashiach, your Hawashah, whatever you want to call them, because they like the mockers. That's how we know he didn't come and die for your sins. It wasn't justified. Let's read it one more time. The father shall not be put to death for the children. Neither shall the children be put to death for the fathers. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Now, we keep reading this. We know without a shadow of a doubt, it's not dealing with the Almighty. The Almighty don't give us laws and be like, yes, yeah, for me as well. Let's keep reading. Um, keep reading down. <coughs> Um, verse 18, verse 18, but thou shalt remember that thou was a bondman in Egypt and Yahweh the Elohim redeemed thee thence. Therefore, I command thee to do this thing. The almighty wasn't a bondman in Egypt. He clearly is talking to the group of people that was a bombing in Egypt. Right. Um, so you, and it's sad that we got to do this, but it's like script on phonics. We got to do this for these people that really want to um, not read between the lines or whatever the case may be. Let's keep reading. Read, um, read 19. Verse 19. When thou cuttest down thine harvest in the field and hast forgot a sheaf in the field, thou shalt not go again to fetch it. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, and for the widow. And Yahweh thy Elohim may bless thee in all the works of thine hand. Once again, when you cut us down, Dying harvest. When the last time the Almighty cut down the harvest, He told us to bring the sheep to Him. When we do this, He told the priest to wave the sheep or the first fruits. Uh, next verse, verse twenty. When thou beatest thine olive tree, thou shalt not go over the bowls again. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, and for the widow. The Almighty don't beat down olive trees. More clear case in point that he's talking directly to a group of people. But they'll read verse 16 and say, see, the Messiah didn't come and die for your sins. So we interconnecting these scriptures that let you know when we dealing with this, you will get it from this lesson. When we dealing with this lesson, you will get it from this lesson. That's why the, I said that they be connecting with each other. All right, let's go to Exodus uh, chapter four. All right, so. The father shall not be put to death for the children, neither the children shall be put to death for the father. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. All right. We know what that means. That means if I go and commit adultery, they don't come look for my son to put him to death and vice versa. That's all it's talking about. Um, uh -oh. go ahead, One thing uh, to lay me back on that, when they say... When they use that to say that no man can die for another man's sin, so why do we all die? We die for the sins of the first man. Mm -hmm. We die for the death into the world through sin. Exactly. And that's my father, my great 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 grandfather. Nah, he was off one. Just keep it count. Yep. So um, so let's refresh everybody's memory. We're in Exodus 4 because all this stuff got to be read over, man, thoroughly and, um, you know, like refurbished. So Exodus 4 and 22 through 24. <clears throat> Exodus 4, uh, 22 through 24, and it reads, And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith Yahweh, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. And I say unto thee, let my son go, that he may serve me. And if thou refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay thy son, even thy firstborn. And it came to pass, by the way in the end, that Yahweh met him 
and sought to kill him. Right. And guess what? Even with this scripture here, there was no, um, even if we want to look at it as if it's tying in at, um, Deuteronomy 24 and 16, there was no um, sin being committed here by the son for, you know, for this to be enacted. If you notice, it was more so like a recompense type of deal, like um, like a um ransom. Right. You know what I mean? Like paid in full. You know what I mean? In a sense, if y'all remember that movie, if y'all remember any you know movie or any situation, I'm going to go get my loved one back. Right. right? <laughs> Just like my op when he went down to Atlanta with the brothers, yeah. we're going to go get our loved one back. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we willing to return the recompense if need be. Because these people, these policemen ain't gonna do nothing about it. The government ain't gonna do nothing about it. So the Almighty was just returning a recompense. And what ended up happening? We go to um, we keep reading on down. We'll see exactly who died for the sins of who. One man, Pharaoh, who was the king of Egypt, that didn't want to do something as strategic as let Israel go. He just was holding them captive. Let's go to Exodus 12. Holding them captive, making them serve with rigor, and the Almighty looked upon it. That's my firstborn of nations. Israel is who I chose, and you got them held captive, so we got to um, do some um, some washing out. Verse 29 of Exodus 12. It's the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verse 29, and it reads, And it came to pass. That at midnight, Yahweh smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of cattle. So if you in Egypt right now, you asking the question, what did I have to do with this? Pharaoh, the one who held him captive. He said the firstborn of Pharaoh to who else? To the, um, to the one or Pharaoh that sat on the throne unto the firstborn of the captive. Right? What do you got to do with this? You captive. Right? Um, what else? Into the um into all the firstborn that um all the firstborn of cattle. If you are a beast, you really don't got nothing to do with this. Right. <laughs> but your firstborn died. And guess what? If you was Israel that didn't want to hearken at that time to sprinkle the blood on the doorpost, your firstborn would have died. So the Almighty can do whatever he want to do. Um, and he's not a ticking time bomb. He got patience. We sat in Egypt for a couple hundred years. Um, now to his time, it's like, you know, very short, but he's very patient um, and specific. But he can do whatever he want to do when he want to do it. All right. Um, where we at? Let's go to Exodus 22 real quick. We're going to... Um, we're going to switch it up a little bit. We're going to go and deal with this particular law that when we go here, it's kind of funny because I believe it's still staying today. Like, I really believe it's still staying today, and I'll break it down as we read through. So Exodus 22 and 28. It's the book of Exodus, chapter 22 and verse 28. It says, Thou shalt not revile the Elohim, nor curse the ruler of thy people. All right. Pretty simple. Um, twofold. Thou shalt not revile the Elohim, nor curse the ruler of thy people. So what does this mean? What does this mean to us in this room? What does this mean to us online? Um, if you have a righteous ruler over your people, um, you got to treat them pretty much as um, our kings was, was to be treated in times past. Like we may be in captivity right now. We may be um, all on the same playing field and stuff like that. But there are certain people that have took the initiative to go out and be a representative of the almighty like, like the kings was back then. So when you got somebody like, you know, Agyash, um, if somebody was to come in here and disrespect them, I'm slapping them, like for real. <laughs> and most people might be like, what are you doing? That's violent. No, nah. here's a law right here that nah, said, slow, um, thou shall not revile the Elohim. 
Um, and we know that's a plural title. You can be Elohim on earth or Elohim, you know, celestial. Um, nor curse the ruler of thy people. So don't be cursing the ruler of our people that's out there doing what they're supposed to do or doing what they, um, you know what I mean, what they're supposed to do and what they're, you know, required to do. And don't be um, reviling them. Don't be disrespecting them. We um, see about 2,000 years ago, let's go to the book of Acts. Let's go to the book of Acts. This is why I said I'm going to just slap you. He's gonna get you bad, man. Because we about to read in the book of Acts. Um, where I want to go, Acts twenty three. Oh yeah, oh yeah, he gonna get bad, real bad. And that's and that goes for any like any of y'all up here. I'm just saying one name, like that goes for anybody that is um, you know, a leader of our over our people, and they doing the right things. Like you got to get dealt with. And I'm going to say this. I ain't going to say no names, but a couple people should have already been slapped. They just wasn't at arm's length. A couple people was already, you know, in a... For real, y'all laughing, but a couple people was know. first ballot. They was just online talking that talking that talk. Um, So where I say? Acts 23, verse 3 through 5. I like this, I like this script. Yeah, three through five. It's the book of Acts, chapter 23, verses three through five, and it reads, Then said Paul unto him, Elohim shall smite thee, thou whited wall, for sittest thou to judge me after the law, and commandest me to be smitten contrary to the law. And they that stood by, revilest thou Elohim's high priest? Then said Paul, I wish not, brethren, that he was the high priest, for it was written, for it is written, thou shalt not speak evil of the ruler of thy people. And there it is. Over here in the first century, this law still stood. It still stands today. The Almighty gave, gave us the ability to carry out these laws and enact them. Now it's up for the person that's um, reciprocating this, who is being disrespectful to have to, you know, take it up with the Almighty. But the Almighty also give us, um, you know, power, rank, and authority. You know, we doing it the right way. All right. Um, let me see where I want to go next. Um, Deuteronomy twenty eight. All right, give me one second. Let's um, read verse 30 out of Deuteronomy 28. I want to see something real quick. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 30, and it reads, Thou shalt betroth a wife, mm -hmm. and another man shall lie with her. Thou shalt build a house, and thou shalt not dwell therein. Thou shalt plant a vineyard, and thou shalt not gather the grapes thereof. So, Everybody equate this to what? Slavery, right? So it's twofold. Um, who's actually putting the punishment on, 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 on us here? The Almighty, right? Read it one more time, Mop, because y'all about to see something. Thou shalt betroth a wife, mm -hmm. and another man shall lie with her. What man in here can tell um, any man that you're going to betroth the wife, but 
I'm gonna allow another man to lay with her right before your face. What man can do that on earth? It's gonna be a shootout, it's gonna be a whatever. But the Almighty said you're gonna be trough for wife, and another man gonna lie with her. Keep reading. Thou shalt build a house, and thou shalt not dwell therein. So if we go to um, I think it's Deuteronomy 20 and 5. This twofold as well, right? Um, because the Almighty don't deal with no punks, no cowards. And not, you know, no, you're not a coward if you walk away from certain situations, right? To spare your life. The Almighty wants people to fear him. If you don't fear him, then you're pretty much a coward in a sense, because if he sends you out to go battle and you don't want to go fight, the Almighty sent people home back then. He said, if y'all got some punks, send them home and go fight with the little group that you got, because those punks going to make y'all lose. So he said, send, he sent them home. But here he's saying, here's the curse of that um that word. He said, you're going to build a house and another man going to um, dedicate it. Because if you build a house at this time and he sends you out to battle, but you scared, guess who dedicates it? Another man. Guess who now lays with your wife who's widow? Another man. Because you went out and, oh, and fought so a battle that you were scared of and you died. And another man dedicated your life that you were supposed so to bring up. So why be scared if you're going to lose it all? Keep reading. If it's more, I don't know if it's more or not. Yeah, one more. Uh, thou shalt plant a vineyard and shall not gather the grapes thereof. Right, same deal. You plant in a vineyard, you have a business, but if you are fear-hearted and faint-hearted, you die and another man dedicated. All right, Um. but watch this. 2 Samuel chapter 12. We all be reading these stories, and sometimes the stories be boring until you realize who the author of these stories, in which we know who the author of the stories are. And you start realizing, wait a minute, that was connected to that? Um, and all we want out of here is verse 11 through 13. The book of Second Samuel, chapter we, 12, yeah, 11, verses 13. 11 through 13. And it reads, Thus saith Yahweh, Behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thine own house, and I will take thy wives before thine eyes, and give them unto thy neighbor. And he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of his son, of this son. For thou didst it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the son. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against Yahweh. And Nathan said unto David, Yahweh also has put away thy sin. Thou shalt not die. Right. So let's read into this. David did what? Put you right in the head out on the front line because he had some secretness in his heart that he wanted to go sleep with his wife, Beersheba. Once he did this wicked thing, the Almighty now did what? He calls David to do what? Or he calls the men to do what to his wives? Commit what? No. But ain't the Almighty at fault for that? But who can punish the Almighty? This is adultery at best. If men did it with their own will, but when the Almighty intervened, it's not. The Almighty be having people DNA change, like real talk. You got a man, man, and then it start getting more feminine down the line. Then they start to change. Now men start turning to homosexual. The Almighty did it. But he got a law saying, don't be a homosexual. But because of people's disobedience, because of bloodline and different traits, the Almighty caused this stuff to happen. But who, like um, Nebuchadnezzar said, who can say, what are you doing? You feel me? So I just wanted y'all, I got, I'm coming to you. I, I just wanted, um, Y'all to see that that most people wouldn't look at this for what it's worth. That's adultery. But when the Almighty intervened, it wasn't. Mm -hmm. You can do whatever you want to do. Um, Elijah. Elijah. I just wanted to point out real quick that we see that in Romans. I think it's Romans 1 mm -hmm. where they got this sin in their heart. And so he gave them away to the sin that's in their heart. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So I just wanted to let me back off for that. That is the same thing we've seen that in the book of Romans. Yeah. Right. Yep. Exactly. So who can ask these questions? All this stuff rhetorical. The Almighty said he gonna cause your wives to be laid with in the sight of the sun. What? That don't even look right today. We know we got pornography. Had to say, you know what I mean. Right, right, right. But imagine walking outside in, in ancient Israel, and you look on the rooftop, and it's about however many wives he had lined up. That'll look crazy. But the Almighty said, "I'm gonna do this because of what you did." And then, wait though, wait. Who's supposed to die from from this? Ain't David supposed to be getting killed from this? Exactly. But. Let's read the latter part in 13 again so nobody don't miss it. Um, I'm in the latter part of 13. And Nathan said unto David, Yahweh has put away your sin. You shall not die. He's supposed to be gone. But who died from this act? The son died. You know what I mean? The son got sick and died. Okay, so um, and now, and now we know why we say when we go to Deuteronomy 24 and 16, that's not a connection to that. Um, because the Almighty was the um, you know, the progenitor or the mediator between this incident. So um, let's get some more. Let's go to Leviticus 20. So I hope y'all um I hope this good for y'all and stuff like that, because like I said, in conversation. These things gonna come up. Somebody gonna bring out that scripture. Somebody gonna bring out other scriptures and try to put the Almighty in a box. Um, oh shoot, my bad. Leviticus twenty and verse uh, ten. I... It's the book of Leviticus, chapter twenty, verse ten. And the man that committeth adultery with another man's wife, even he that committeth adultery with his neighbor's wife. The adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. Cool. Just wanted to make sure we read the law before the ears of those that needed it to show that the adulterer and the adulteress shall be put to death. All right. Um, Exodus 23. um this is a good one right here this is a great one uh exodus 23 um uh, all we want is verse 13. exodus 23 and 13. The book of Exodus, chapter 23 and verse 13, and it reads, <clears throat> in, And in all things that I have said unto you, be circumspect, and make no mention of the name of other Elohim, neither let it be heard out of thy mouth. The Almighty said, be careful how you talk around me when it comes to other Elohim. Just like a husband. That's why I said the scripture, man, they be connected so poetically. The Almighty is um, joined to, uh, or Yah is joined to Wah, Wah is joined to Yah. So just as a husband and his wife, you better be careful how you speak in my household. I don't want to hear your ex name. Um, now, if your, if your um, co-worker or somebody so happened to have the same name as your ex, that's a different story. But we all know what it is when it comes to um, ex-members. Don't bring them up. I don't want to hear their name. I don't want to see memorabilia. I don't want to. I don't want to. It's almost like it's almost like this. And it's harsh, but I got to put it on record because some people think like this. It's almost like if that ex died, don't even go to the funeral because mm -hmm. it get that serious between a husband and wife. I ain't saying you can't be sad and sorrowful, but oh y'all okay, y'all took it a step further. 
<laughs> they took it a step further. <laughs> you sad? You better go in the kitchen and cut some onions and pretend. I didn't set the room. I didn't shook the room. <laughs> so it's like the Almighty said, don't make mentions of these other Elohim, right? And um, we'll break it down as we go. Let's go to Hosea chapter 2. All right, a clear law given to us, but watch this. And when we get there, we're going to read 16 and 17. It's the book of Hosea. Chapter now. Before you read that, I, the context is, um, well, not the context, but um, who's speaking in here is the Almighty, just to throw that out there, but go ahead. Cool. Hosea chapter 2, verses 16 to 17, and it reads, And it shall be at that day, saith Yahweh, that thou shalt call me Ishi, and shall call me no more the B-word, for I will take away the names of the B word out of her mouth and they shall no more be remembered by their name. But he told us to be circumspect. Don't mention them. But is that same thing um, presented to him? Absolutely not. He can say it. He don't have a problem saying it. He actually would rather say it so that you can know the specifics of who he's talking about and what he's dealing with. Don't say the name. Um, My bad. Verse 16, and it shall be at the day, says Yahweh, that you shall call me Ishi, um, right, husband, and shall call me no more B.A., for I will take the names of B.A. out of her mouth, and they shall no more be remembered by their name. So exactly what he told us not to do, he said he was going to actually help us not do it. Take it out of our mouth, but he said the name. Um, guess guess who else said a name of a deity? Um, I think it's Matthew twelve. I ain't got this in my note, but let's go to Matthew twelve. Is it twelve? Um, uh, not sure, but I think I'm as well. This just came to my head, um, as I was uh going through. What's the uh scripture? I'm looking for the scripture where the Mashiach was dealing with the um 24. It's 12 and 24? I believe so. Okay, yeah. Yeah. All right, so uh the book of Matthew chapter 12. Um Yeah, let's just start at 22. Book of Matthew chapter 12 verses 22 through 24 and it reads, Then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him in so much that the blind and dumb both spake and saw and all the people that were, and all the people were amazed and said, "Is this, is not this the son of David?" But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, "This fellow does not cast out devils, but by BZB, the prince of the devils." Right. So the Pharisees, they like we don't care about Exodus twenty three and thirteen because they clearly like, yeah, he casting out uh, devils by this name. Right, but let's see. Um, let's get the rest. Go ahead. And Yahweh knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Hasatan cast out Hasatan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? And if I by BZB cast out devils. By whom do your children cast them out? 
therefore they shall be your judges so who can um <laughs> who can um because it seems like we got a problem here right so who can help us with this issue who sinned in this situation Pharisee. yeah how was y'all didn't either nope or um did y'all was y'all not saying or did he nope why they both said the name Go ahead. Yeah. So uh, a question: Is it a, a sin when we when we say use the word uh, through the week? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, because them guys too, or should we just say day one, day two, or day three? I'm a, um, I can answer it, but I think uh, Moray, he um, he deal with that like very potent, and I think he got like a better critique answer on that uh, from what I've heard, from any other explanations that I've heard. You want to deal with that? So basically. Um, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday are not names of gods, but they were named after gods. So, um, the God, for instance, Tuesday was never a name of a God, but it was a God name. Uh, you can look it up in the dictionary. It spells something like T-W-A-I, something like that, but it was not Tuesday. Wednesday was named after a God, but the God name was never Wednesday. The God name was W-O-O-D-E-N. Thursday was named after a God. There was no God named Thursday. His name was T-H-O-R. So you could say these names of the week because they're not names of gods, but gods, they're named after gods. You know, Friday was never a name of a God. The God's name was um, something like F-R-A-I-Q or something, something like that. It's always something similar, uh, but it's not the name itself that we're saying. And here's the other end of that. Even if it was, let's say that Monday is the name of the second day of the week, but there was also a God called Monday. That's not breaking the law unless you're calling on that God, meaning this. If you're saying Monday in reference to the second day of the week, that's not breaking the law. The law says don't call on the name of another God, neither let it be heard out of thy mouth. So therefore, we would be if breaking the law every single day. If I say that he have on Nike shoes, I'm referring to his shoes. But if you go back, there was a God by that name. Well, I'm not talking about that God. I'm not calling on the name of that God. Some of y'all names in English are names of other God. While I'm talking to you, I'm not calling on that God. So it's all in the context of how you use it is the second part of it. Just a quick answer. Yep. So the Mashiach definitely didn't sin. We know the scriptures um clearly states that um he had no gal in his mouth. He was the um lamb without blemish and all these different things. And what Mashiach was doing was um this instance wouldn't have fit Exodus 23 and 13 for him because um he actually um it was like sarcasm in a sense, number one, because he like, how can I, how can, um, if you keep reading, he asking like, do Satan cast out Satan? Yeah, you know I mean, do Satan look to divide his own kingdom? So it's like, it's sarcasm in a sense. And he never used the name to call to remind or to call to remember or call to um, reverence. So when we go into that definition, when it says be circumspect, don't make mention, of any other name of any other deities this is for the children of israel because we will use these names for our deliverance and stuff like that he said neither let it be heard out of thy mouth um and i think the uh hebrew name for mention is like zokar or something like that and it's like call to mind you know call to remembrance and stuff like that of who we thought that our deity was at that time doing all these deliverance and stuff like that so all he was doing was just playing the situation he already knew their hearts what man could say that they know the hearts of another man if they aren't already a part of the Elohim in spirit? 
So he was more so connected to the Almighty in the sense of, you know, um, being able to do these things, perform certain stuff and say certain stuff. But still, there was no God, there was no sin found in him on the account of scriptures and on the, on the account of the Almighty. All right, so um, Malachi chapter 1. One through three, y'all. We're gonna read verse one through three when y'all get there. It's the book of Malachi, chapter one, verses one through three, and it reads The burden of the word of Yahweh to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith Yahweh, yet ye say, Wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith Yahweh? Yet I love Jacob. And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. So the Almighty said, I love Jacob and I hated Esau, right? Why is everybody feeling like we can follow suit? Why do every man in the camp and their wives, their family, all, why have they all been bamboozled to think? Because the Almighty hated Esau, we can now hate Esau. And when we go out here on these street corners, um, we're going to you know, preach hate towards them and tell them they're going to be licking the bottom of our boots and all these different things, right? Hate doctor. Um, and the Almighty clearly said, I hated him, but I love Jacob. But we can show scriptures where the Almighty also said he hate Israel. Man. So you should go out there and hate them too. But watch this. Um, here's a direct law. And this is how you know people don't know the law. Right. They may have big shiny garments on and talk all loud and elegant and stuff like that but they don't know the law so really they just dumb right. and i'm just calling the spade a spade deuteronomy 23 and 7. here go a direct law we should be able to read this law um dissect it and not wait we should be scared to do anything outside of this law like we should be really afraid to just go contrary to what is written. But these people don't really fear the Almighty. They fear they can't lead her. That's who they that's who they real fathers are. Mm -hmm. So Deuteronomy 23, verse 7. Deuteronomy 23 and 7, and it reads, Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite, for he is thy brother. Thou shalt not abhor an Egyptian, because thou wast a stranger in his land. But the Almighty hated him. He don't got to follow this law, but we do. Abhor only means to hate. And then he said, don't abhor an Egyptian. You would think that we need to abhor them, because they had us in captive for 300 and some years, or 200 and some. So um, that's pretty self-explanatory. And, you know, it's just going along the lines that what we've been saying this whole time. Sovereign Elohim. You got something up? Yeah. Um, I actually had this conversation. Mm. So like, I had actually had this conversation with a op um while they was they was trying to debate that you know Esau was the white man. And I said, you know, he was like, and I hate them devils. And I said, okay, well, even if even if what you're saying, I'm gonna play devil's advocate. Even if what you're saying is true, we got a lot to say we can't hate them. Right. And they are being taught that that law was done away with because of something that the Edomites did later on down the line. And when you say, show me the scripture that say that that law was done away with because they went against some kind of a covenant that they had, then it's you just little white people. <laughs> It, essentially that's essentially that's that's where it go because they there is right, nowhere they definitely there's, do. there's nowhere in the scriptures that that say that that's done away with because if we if we can say that that's done away with then we got then we got to go on here with the christians and say the whole thing is done away with yep that's true um most people don't know how to fight scripture with scripture they fight scripture with emotions mm -hmm. so Plus, like this real quick, what is it going to benefit us 
to just carry that hate all day, every day long. You got to make yourself remember, like, oh, they white ain't supposed to like you. <laughs> you know what I mean? You got to, like, that's a burden unto yourself. Yeah, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you got to all day long, you got to keep renewing your mind. Like, I don't like him. I don't like him. I don't. Like, that's just crazy. Like, you tearing yourself up, for real. Like, you, you damaging yourself. You are just continuously just hating people all day long like you see people like that you see white supremacists like that you know what i'm saying and they be mad they like to be messed up because they got so much hate in them for everything you know what i'm saying it's just like what benefit on the day of judgment that almighty's not going to be like you not making a kingdom because you didn't hate all these people that's not a part of the program you know what i'm saying like that's just not a part of the program so it's just like it's just I don't know. It, it's just bad. You know what I'm saying? That's all I can say about it. So if you really hate them, then stop going and working in their businesses and facilities. You don't hate them. You just putting on the show. Most people that's really pumped at heart try to mask it with violence and hard words and stuff like that. You be, it be like this. I say this joke all the time. You be mashkapalaba on Shabbat, cussing them out. And on Sunday, you be back to Johnny making $9 an hour for him. But you was just cussing them out for 12 hours on the block the day before. But you making minimum wage for them. And as soon as, soon as Johnny be like, come to my office, you in there humble and meek. Hey, exactly. hey what, what's going on? Exactly. <laughs> Explain to me. Well, well, you know, I, you know, I just <laughs> why your volume at a two now? Right, right. <laughs> Yesterday it was. was seventeen. White devil! <laughs> All of you going to hell. You go. We gonna oh, rape your women and everything when the king so, come. And then the next, the next day, what? Well, well, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Per my last email, I was really just trying to say that. Uh... <laughs> And I don't oh, man. The, the Almighty want us to seek the peace of the city, right? Yeah. As we talk to do, whatever we in, whatever category, we seek the peace of the city. You know what I'm saying? And to be perfectly honest, a lot of times when it comes to other nations, knowing who we are and knowing what the prophecy said about us, seeking the peace really just means leaving them alone and banning into ourselves, right? Because it's has been proven over and over again that as a whole, we don't work well together. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. Seek the peace. Most of them, this project, don't want nothing to do with us anyway. So cool. We're going to do our own thing. Y'all going to do y'all own thing. You know what I'm saying? And then it'll work out. we going to build our own thing over here. Y'all been, that's what we did in Egypt. We had a special place where we was in. We wasn't in and among the Egyptian neighborhoods. We lived in Goshen. The Egyptians lived in their part of Egypt. We lived in Goshen. We do the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Let's buy from each other. Let's support each other. Let's be with each other. Let's do X, Y, and Z. You know what I'm saying? Like we did in Black Wall Street. Yep. You know what I'm saying? We'll be a little bit different. No, I ain't going to say that because the brothers in back Black Wall Street, they definitely fought back. When you know the documentary, you read the story about this and that, they fought back and was doing real good until they came with them planes. Yeah, that's, that's why they came with the planes. Yeah, until they came that's with them exactly planes, why. they was handling their business. I was about to say, we're a little different than our ancestors, though. We're going to seek the peace, but when war comes, we're going to handle our business. But we're not going to look for war. We don't want war, but we ain't going to back down. When we're in the right by the standards of the Almighty, go ahead. All right, so last um uh, couple scriptures. Um, first Kings 22. Then we'll open it up to y'all. So, yeah, we hope, um, and pray that this lesson was good. We got more scriptures, man. Um, but we'll close out with this and let everybody just soak. Soak in what's been brought forth so far. So do um first Kings 22, verse 20 through 23. <laughs> you see what I see? You see what I see? All right. <laughs> Yeah, y'all yeah, so say that for me. All right, so here we go. And it reads, uh, where we at? 20. Verse 20. Hold on, I'm just holding my 
thumb hit it. Um, First Kings 22, uh, verses 22, 20 through 22. And it 20, reads 20 through 23. 20 through 23. And Yahweh said, Who shall persuade Ahab? That he may go up and fall at Rev Ramoth Gilead. Ramoth Gilead. They need a hyphen. <laughs> they put hyphens in everybody else's name. Right. Ramoth Gilead. And one said on this manner, and another said on that manner. And there came forth a spirit and stood before Yahweh and said, I will persuade him. And Yahweh said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go forth. And I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, Thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. Now, therefore, behold, Yahweh hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets. And Yahweh hath spoke, spoken evil concerning thee. Now, this is real key, right? Because we know the Almighty is doing this. So everything is rhetorical, right? Um, which he can. But um, if we try to do it, um, we know that we break in a particular law. Let's go to, to um, Leviticus 19. Several laws because lying or um, being treacherous, being deceitful, it come in man's different forms. So it's not like I'm telling Artie, go say this word or that word. It's a critique way you can cause somebody to go lie to somebody else. Um, both sides of the spectrum got to be very careful with it. Tail bear, like all these different things, man, it consists of having an evil tongue, right? Um, one towards another. But where, where I say? 19 and 11. Let's just read that. It's the book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 11, and it reads, Ye shall not steal, neither deal falsely, Neither lie one to another. Right. Pretty self-explanatory. A law for us. But the Almighty said he put the lying spirit in the mouth of these people. He did it. We don't even got the power that the Almighty has to even do that. But when it happens from a scale of um, something deceitful and stuff like that, you look back at the man like you need to be punished. Both of y'all. But well, who can do that to the Almighty? Saying, Yahweh. You put these these spirits inside of these prophets to go and lie. So we got to punish you. You're going to die on the spot doing something like that. You could. So we don't play with the Almighty like that. We don't put him in a box. Um, and so, like I said, we got more scriptures, you know, involving how sovereign the Almighty is. So let's just take these things into consideration. You know, when they come up in conversation, we just pray and hope that we can dissect it through these different lessons and be able to share light to somebody that's open um on these particular things but we'll open it up to y'all if y'all got comments questions it don't necessarily got to be towards the lesson we know we got stuff online as well that we'll deal with so we'll open it up at this time all right Uh, by us knowing the truth now, is it wrong for us to say J E S U S for what we know because we know the truth now? Yes, absolutely. Um, J E S U S, not going too deep. J E S U S is another God. Um, so it would definitely, um, knowing what we know and it's truth now, being woken to, you know, uh, the scripture that we just read and stuff like that and being accepted to it, it would definitely be a direct transgression of the law. Let me uh, go to the law, actually, right? So we already read the one in what was it, Exodus 23 and 13, I believe. Mm -hmm. Don't call upon the name of another guy. Yep. Now let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Give me a second. I got to find the script that I want. Don't have to say, uh, when you get there, you should suffer another guy. Um, probably like 30 something. Oh, yep. 
Okay, hold on. I think I won. Verse 36. Deuteronomy 28. All right, Black, you read verse 36. Deuteronomy 28 and 36. Now, we all know Deuteronomy 28 is a prophecy about us being in scattered to all these lands, North America, you know what I'm saying, America, Haiti, Brazil, on this to transatlantic slave trade is what this is talking about, right? This whole pretty much chapter. Some things will happen in the chapter was prophesied about back then, but some things only fit this captivity. Now watch this. Go ahead, verse 36. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 38, 28, verse 36, and it reads, Yahweh shall bring thee and thy king, which thou shalt set over thee unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, and there shalt thou serve other Elohim, wood and stone. So the Almighty prophesied that he was going to bring us into a nation that neither thou nor thy fathers have known. That's this land right here called America, because we didn't know about this land. Our forefathers didn't know about this land, right? You don't read in the scriptures about America. You read in Genesis 10 about all these lands he gave to the Hamites, all the lands he gave to the descendants of Sham, all the lands he gave to the descendants of Jacob. Nowhere in there do you read about the West. You read about America. So this is the land that he said he was going to send us that neither you nor your fathers have known. And then it says, unto a nation that thou nor thy fathers have known, and there, or wait a minute, and it says, and thou shalt serve other Elohim, wood and stone. Right? So it's talking about when we get to this land, we're going to serve another God. That makes sense? When we get to this land, we're going to serve another God. Now, my question is, what God did we serve once we got to this land? There's no record of us, the children of Israel, worshiping anybody by the name of J-E-S-U-S -S until we came to America. That name didn't exist until we came to America. The English alphabet did not have a letter J when we first stepped shores on America. In 1619, some will say, the first slave ships came to America. At that time, the English alphabet had 25 letters. The letter J wasn't one of them. You couldn't even make that pronunciation that we're making today. And then in 1611, the first King James Version Bible was printed. We have one right behind us. Anybody can look at it, open it up. There's no letter J anywhere in there. How do they spell Jerusalem? With an I. How do they spell J-E-S-U-S? I-E-S-U-S. Right? And then shortly after, they created the letter J. And shortly after that, they started printing Bibles and they changed his name to J-E-S-U-S in those blue Bibles. And now here we come worshiping the God that our slave masters gave us. Nothing was wrong with the book. The book itself was perfect. But what happens is, I seen a meme the other day on Facebook. It said, nothing's wrong with the Bible. Just don't let a liar teach it to you. Yeah. So what happened is, liars has been teaching us what's in our book, right? Until you start to read it for yourself, I'm sure you assumed Christmas was somewhere in here. Man. Until you started to read it for yourself, you thought somewhere in here, it do tell you to go to church on Sunday. You're like, I just don't know where it is, but it got to be in there somewhere because everybody I see, my whole family, everybody wears suits. They go out every week. It got to be in there somewhere. You let liars tell you what's in the book. Yeah. Right? So again, J-E-S-U-S is a God in and of itself. It is a newly sprung up God. Sometimes in the scriptures, the Almighty talk about you worship gods that was newly sprung up. This is a newly raised up God that was prophesied that we were worship when we came to America. That's why it says even wood and stone. J-E-S-U-S is a wooden statue and a cross. Right? J-E-S-U-S says, the people that worship him says, we don't keep no commandments. They're all done away with. Yep. The people that worship him do Easter and high eggs and let their kids go find them. The people that were serve Yahweh and Yahweh Shah don't do that. Therein lies the spiritual connection. Yep. You brought a whole lesson out about that. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna mention that too. If if you um need the complete breakdown, um we did it on our uh Thursday night podcast. You can go to our Israel Now page and you can um check it out. I wanted to know, um, I don't even know if I'm answering this question right or asking, um, about secular music, listening to secular music. 
It's all good. She got a similar question, but it's revered to her. Make her more let me ask you. Let me ask you. I know they. I know they gonna break it down. Break it down. Every every remix. But I'm gonna. I'm gonna ask a question back. Do you have secular conversation? You you never have secular conversation. Okay. Do you? So every conversation that you have throughout the day, every single day in your life, is based on the online. Okay. We just bring out that script again that says don't don't lie to one another. Because uh, <laughs> I know. I wasn't oh, used to <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Look, she got she got that zeal though. Like she she been around for a while, but she look kind of like newly, you know what I'm saying? Re really getting dedicated to the truth. And for real, for real, sometimes when you be like that, especially new, like. You know what I'm saying? They talk to her, they know, hey, she got witnesses. You know what I'm saying? Some people probably don't. Like, when you really just new into the thing, you be, like, totally engulfed in it. Totally engulfed your whole life. You wake up, you go to sleep, all the word of the Almighty. I understand. Hey, everybody believes hey, different. I stay that way. Stay that way. That's a beautiful thing. You know what I'm saying? Because, to be honest, what else is it to really talk about for real? I ain't going. What else is it to really talk about for real? You know what I'm saying? When you really be getting into other stuff, you're like, man, this is lame. You know what I mean? I don't even like small talk. I don't like small talk at all. I'm going to say this. Um, Proverbs 6. Um, dang, I, I can't. Uh, the, the verse slipped my mind right now. But um, six things that y'all will hate. Um, when you go and read it, that secular music is intertwined in there. These shows is intertwined in there. And when you really think about it, a lot of this stuff be stemming from off the law. You know, hands that share innocent blood. The Almighty don't want nobody over here slaying their brother with guile and waiting on them promiscuously and stuff like that, or presumptuously, my bad. But, um, you know, different things of that nature, the Almighty um, let us know what we shouldn't do as far as the spiritual side. That secular music, these secular shows can, um, you know, derive from that. It can cause a person to, you know, go into that. So um that's how I would see it. I would also uh it's a good question too. Define secular. Um yeah, well then somebody gonna be like define world. <laughs> so check this out. We can define it this way. Things that will um that will lower your spirit and spiritual walk. I'm not even talking about things that just don't even bother your spiritual walk, but things that will lower your spiritual walk, we should stay away from all of that. Like the reality shows that a lot of people watch, that's totally nothing but that. And I, I, I realize the music and uh, what's going on in the day, it affects our children way more than it affects an adult. Um, an adult could be able to watch it, especially those of us who matured in the truth and just go about our business. Like, oh man, that was drama, but that was stupid. Let me get back to what I got to do. But children are very much affected by these things. You know what I'm saying? They're very much affected by this stuff. Um, I would definitely want to, first and foremost, keep children away from it as much as possible because um, it alters their mind more than it will an adult. But it, it, but with anybody, if you engulf yourself in it, so my personal, when I say secular, um, I don't just mean something that's made by somebody that's not in the truth. I'm talking about things that will actually um, prohibit your walk from the Almighty, things that go against that, things that's counterproductive to you walking in these commandments and the truth and different things like that. For instance, on a Wednesday night, I know some of the brothers, Artie is a big sports fan. If he want to watch a basketball game, that, that's not negative towards his walk with the Almighty. You know what I'm saying? It's no spirit that's going to make him not want to keep the commandments no more, right? Because you watch the basketball game. You just enjoy life. You can do things as long as it's not breaking the law. Where there's no law, there is no transgression. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it is what it is. But if you go watching some other things that can lower your walk, those are the things we need to stay away from. It's many things out there that you can watch, you know what I'm saying, that's going to prohibit, that's going to, what the Almighty say, your sins have separated you from me. 
that's what we don't want to get involved in. I would also land back on that to say, uh, pay attention to what you listen to and what you watch before bed as well. Because that stuff can alter your dreams. It could, it could disrupt your sleep and, and all of that sort of stuff. And that's just the top layer. I mean, going in deeper into it, we can talk about all sorts of spirits and stuff that are trying to attach themselves to you while you sleep. Sleep paralysis and all of that type of stuff. So you got to be mindful of what you listen to and what you watch before bed as well. We got a few that's online. Um, we're gonna go to. Um, and if y'all got anything, we'll bring them out after this. We we'll deal with that one. Let's deal since we own. Let's deal with it. Um, after we deal with um, Sister Moria. So, um, Sister Moria said, "Is it wrong to listen to music with God and Jesus?" So um, I would say yes. When we go back to that law, being circumspect, uh, it's broken down in three parts. It said to be circumspect for one. Then it says, um, make no mention of these names. Two. Then it says, um, neither let it be heard out of thy mouth. Most of the times when people sing, um, when people are listening to these songs, um, people slip up and say the names as they listening to it. Uh, I've heard it firsthand. And then when he said, uh, make no mention, once again, that word mention means to um, call to remembrance. So those songs are bringing you to remembrance from those things that we were brought up on in Christianity. So it's like, why would we even nibble and dab with any of that stuff and try to think that, you know, when they say the name J-E-S-U-S, I'm going to say, yeah, I was shot. That's too much conflict. We just move on and find a better song. Um, you know, and stuff like that, because the Almighty opened it up by saying, be careful. So being careful is just that. Before you go into these songs, understand that these songs hold spiritual weight. When they start saying these names, these names bring you back into what you just came out of. And you find yourself battling with this name, getting emotional, all these different things and stuff like that. I've heard testimonies of people said, man, they still, you know, it's still hard for them to get over that stronghold of JSUS. And different things of that name, and they always in the truth. So, um, yeah, I would definitely say, like, you know, try to listen to more songs, you know, gospel songs rather, without those names in it. Hey, look, we living in the golden age of Israelite music. Like, because okay, if you've been in the truth for a long time, when I first came into the truth, it wasn't no Israelite music, it wasn't no YouTube. It wasn't no internet. It wasn't no Israelite music. So, you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. But I will say this. Sometimes you can ask the question another day, another way. We've been presenting today, back on our podcast on Thursdays, many other times throughout the years, that this name is actually the worship and the service of another God. You see it by the actions. You see it by what is taught about them, what is followed and everything. But the people don't really believe that. That's why this stuff comes up all the time. But if we ask this question, is it okay to sing songs to the Muslim deity and call him his name in them songs? I think everybody would be like, no, don't do that. Is it okay to sing songs to the deity of um, Buddhism and in those songs uh, say his name within those songs? Is that not singing and praises to another deity? Everybody can see it when it comes to that. But they don't see it when it comes to this because you grew up like that and you grew up with this like it is definitely another guy you know what i'm saying it just is it's just definitely another guy um i think that when we look at it in that light i think people can see it more go ahead before you go by so um i don't even like you know when the little cooking shows come on and stuff i mean my wife got me watching them and stuff so, ain't nothing wrong with that. I can watch him. I have to test expose right. thyself. <laughs> Sorry, ain't nothing wrong with but that. But nah, so um, I'll be watching the cooking shows, and I promise you, as soon as I see one con contestant start making pork, I just turn the whole show off. Like, I don't want to see the show. No, I'll wait till the next one come on. And that was a good show, too. They was getting it in. And they went to the next segment and start cooking pork. 
I don't want to see nothing now. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like when what, what is an abomination in the sight of the Almighty can't be highly esteemed before men. It got to be an abomination in your eyes as well. So. Mm-hmm. Boy, so, start making that chicken more solid. He was like, "Hey, that's look live. If we gonna make this grill swine, man." <laughs> yeah, exactly. uh, my my viewpoint, my view, my viewpoint on it is 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 a smidgen different because, as we all know, there's been plenty times we've come to come to Shabbat, taught a lesson, took went to break, and then went into praise and worship, and we we sang songs that are that were written to worship that deity. Right. But we in here and we, we change the words, we change the name because it means something completely different to us. Now, if I'm in my car and I'm on Spotify and you know I'm just letting it do its thing and then it happens to come to that song that we just sang in here, you know what I'm saying? I'm already, I don't use that name in any time ever. Even in conversation with Christians, I don't use that name. I'll say Christ. You know what I'm saying? Even when, when Christians come to me and they have that, because I've, uh, I've you know, I'm, I'm far removed from that. I'm way, I ain't never, I ain't, I ain't never slipping. I don't even think you can slip up if you in this walk for real. It's people that say they battle with that, you ain't in this for real then. Because I, I, I take it as, I take it as a disrespectful word. So when I'm listening, when I'm in the car and I'm listening, a lot of the songs that I'll listen to don't mention that name. And to the end, you know, in the end, when they get the breaking down, that's yeah. when I cut it off. Like, all right, bro, you, you, you got you got three strikes. You got to do all right now. That's next, and then here comes Eshawn Burgundy or somebody. But, but um, to lay me back off what y'all said, also with there being you know we in the golden age of truth music, it some some of it ain't ain't quite gold. Right. It's kind of bronze. Got a little little tarnish on there. Some of it, you just got to. <laughs> Seeking, <laughs> seeking, you shall find. Because I don't. I'm telling you. Because we sit, we sit, we sit here during while we eating, and we talk about this stuff, and we be, and I be, I be real bluntly, bluntly honest, real frank. Like, bro, a lot of this music ain't great, you know. So, but seeking, you shall. I, I got a whole playlist now. You know what I'm saying? Because I just continue, continue to diligently search and and find. And, but, but, like we always say, if that's a stronghold for you, absolutely, let it go. There's no reason for you to, if you if you struggle with saying that name, if you struggle with saying that name and, and praying and saying that name and having conversations and saying that name, you gotta you gotta cut it out because you ingest it. You're continuously ingesting it. Like that's like that's like a crackhead getting the Biden bong and being like, I'm gonna stop smoking this crack, but I'm gonna use this bong real quick until it run out. When this when this bong gun, I'm gonna go ahead and stop. You know what I'm saying? You, you gotta wean yourself from it. You gotta almost go cold turkey. For me, I was never one to use the name, even in Christianity. I just never said. I always said Christ, so it wasn't hard for me to jump from it. So when I'm listening to it, you know, I don't want to hear no song with it all through it. But once they get to the end, they get to breaking down. That's when I. That's when I click it. Because like I said, you know, we can't we can't be overly righteous and be like, oh, don't listen to the music, don't say it, don't da 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 da. But we in here singing the songs. Uh, and we change words in here you know what i'm saying so it's just all about again it's all about what you can handle in your own personal walk and i i can't what was good for for, for you may not be good for the next person so on and so forth so here's the thing for me since i have been um you know i was only like in went to christian churches like when i was a kid you know what i mean so yeah um my whole adult life, I didn't go to Christian church. I was just a child. You know what I'm saying? With my dad, like, you going to church. You're going to be out all Saturday night and not go to church Sunday morning. So a lot of those songs, to be perfectly honest, I don't even be knowing they be right. Christian songs. I thought y'all be writing all this stuff. I really do until it come up sometimes. When um it did it come up from time to time a few people like nah that's the song about what's I'm like oh I thought the brothers and sisters wrote all this stuff like I literally don't know like I because I never really and then I came into the truth at 22 and I've been engulfed in the truth so I I never really listened to and even when I came to I never really liked of course I like some songs but I never really got into like gospel music I never got into it I don't know who to be with I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Most of, except for the main songs, I know. You know what I'm saying? But any of that other stuff, I really don't know. 
I don't know no gospel rappers except one. That's Lecrae because I used to work with a guy years ago that used to listen to it all day long. And I was like, oh, I listen to it like, yeah, dude can rap. Besides that, I don't know no other gospel rappers. You know what I'm saying? So that's what be getting me like when I find out from time to time that y'all don't be writing so many songs. I think for the I think for her question, it's more so like um listening, like <clears throat> like actually going to YouTube, and maybe she could comment if I'm wrong, but maybe like going to YouTube, listening to the song all the way through with the name in it, versus like the instrumental, you know, putting that twist on it or whatever, mm -hmm. and then where you can actually uh replace the name without hearing. I'm more so with speaking like you listening to the song when they get to the name, you trying to say how is y'all over the name, like. That's just kind of doing too much. If you're trying to do it that way, um, you better off just listening to a whole another song or something like that. Um, but if it's something like if it's a remix, you know, our people, man, we good at remix and stuff. Um, me personally, I don't see nothing wrong with that part because you can actually like change the whole dynamic of the song at that point. You know what I mean, if you got the, especially if you got the instrumental. But yeah, I don't be knowing a lot of stuff neither, man. So I'd be like, I be saying names. I don't be knowing none of these pastor singers or none of these people. Like, I got a question. I just heard of who, about who a song. Is, is John P. Hey, Tahar, it's a song that you <laughs> sing, <laughs> and I think uh, either Ashley or this is Hadra, they be like on the background. We like the water for your name. Y'all wrote that? Okay, cool. Because I like that song a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to come up with new music, so it's taking us a minute, but we pull from good music, you know, from yeah, other places. Yeah. That's all. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. 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 So, so you're saying it's safe to say you could just do the extra minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Switch it up. So maybe it can be a song by song basis because some of those songs, like she said, yeah, it yeah. do be they use a lot of like sometimes they'll just go into the book of Psalms and get words straight from the song. Right, exactly. Well, that's Hebrew stuff because first of all, it's in the book of Psalms or in the scripture anywhere. They be using words from the scriptures, and a lot of them are Hebrews that wrote them. They just don't. I mean, that wrote the song. They just don't know that he was. They not in the truth. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? I can see that. I think it's song by song basis. You know yeah, what I'm absolutely. saying? Absolutely. Scroll up. I think I'm going to And we got a few more, y'all. Right here. Nah, uh, nah, I don't think there's more before that. Okay. Yeah, so, we got a. Um, Let's the other side. All right, so this is a question for y'all. I'm going to throw it out there to y'all. Switch it up a little bit. Um, Y'all hear me? We're going to throw this question out there into the, uh, to the room. It says, I was wondering who they believe Emmanuel is in Isaiah 7 and 14. So this is a question for y'all. We'll throw out there. Isaiah 7 and 14. Who is um who are they? And I'm I'm guessing he's referring to the non-messianics. Who do they believe Isaiah 7 and 14 is speaking of? Yup, y'all heard what he said. I just said if it's the actual son of Isaiah. Yep. So he said um, they would say that it's the actual son of Isaiah. Anybody heard that? Everybody got their head down? <laughs> you heard it once. Okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So the nine messianics, if I'm understanding this question, Yup, he said non messianic. Uh, they would say that when we go to Isaiah 7 and 14, uh, anybody there by any chance? Yeah. All right, let's read that real quick. 
the book of Isaiah, chapter 7 and verse 14. Therefore, Yahweh himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. All right. So um, Isaiah 7 and 14 is a prophecy given, right? Um, the non-Messianics will go in, on record to say when you go to Isaiah 8, that's the fulfillment of that prophecy. Um, they actually will be right and only in one sense, though, because this is twofold. But can we actually say that he was Emmanuel spoken of in this verse as well? All right. Or can we say that Isaiah's son only fit the part where the virgin conceived and bare his, his son, whose name was Mahershala Bass? All right. Let's read it one more time. Therefore, Yahweh himself shall give you a son. Um, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Butter and honey shall he eat, that he may know to refuse evil and choose the good. For before the child shall know to refuse evil and choose good, the land that thou abhorrest shall, shall be forsaken of both her king. All right. So I think um, in this context, you know, here in both chapters or a few chapters that we read, I think it was like uh, Samaria and Damascus or something like that, um, in which it did happen. All right. It did happen both, um, you know, before this happened, before the child grew to refuse or to know to choose good and evil, um, both of the kings were forsaken. So we can say that. It did fit Mahershala Bass, but the thing is, it actually um, exclusively fit Yahweh Shah because when he was born, they called him by his name, but then they also called him by the title Emmanuel, which means what? Elohim with us. So it was showing both aspects of it, showing how it's like a dual prophecy, but they only cut it short. Like, no, it happened here. It ain't talking about no Christ to come. And it's more to go into it and stuff like that. Like we plan on dealing with like these lessons, dealing with Mashiach so we can better like defend them. Remember, he said, if you deny me before men, I'm going to deny you before the almighty. So I'll fight tooth and nail for Mashiach. Explain to these people how we know he existed. You know what I mean? It'd be stuff they'd be missing, though, that they don't know how to connect because they spiritually blind. Um, but yeah, and then I think we got maybe one more. Can I ask a question? Go ahead, sis. It's a, um, about the Emmanuel chapter. What uh, is the... That's what you want to talk about? What does Emmanuel mean? Elohim with us. Okay, I thought so. Yeah. Okay. You went to that way, but it's safe to say. <laughs> All right, so um, another one. Is it safe to say that the Most High is bound by the covenants he made with his elect, such as with Abraham. You want to answer that? All right. Well, you will have to explain to him why, because I think he also got something else um, stating why he asked that question. So he had because of Exodus 32. He, he followed up. You want to give him the mic? So he followed up and said, I asked this because of Exodus 32, 11 through 14. In First Samuel twelve and twenty two, say so he was just wanting to hear some feedback concerning it. Yep, eleven through fourteen. I'm gonna go ahead and just read Exodus thirty two, uh, eleven through fourteen, and it reads: And Moshe besought Yahweh his Elohim and said, Yahweh, why doth thy wrath wax hot against thy people? which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand. Wherefore, should the Egyptians speak and say, for mischief did he bring them out, to slay them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from thy fierce wrath and repent of this evil against thy people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants, to whom thy swearest by thine own self and said unto, said it unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven and all this land that I have spoken of will I give unto your seeds and they shall inherit it forever. 
Oh, and then it ends at 14. And Yahweh repented of the evil which he sought to do unto his people. Mm, I see what you're trying to say. Because he turned away from the evil. He was but there's another, it's another scripture where it says he did this because of the covenant he made with their fathers. I can't think. I can't. I can't think of where it's at. So, um, I would say no as well, and explain it like this: um, the Almighty put the covenant out and held up his end of the bargain every time. Yeah. Um, it's only by way of our disobedience that the Almighty said, "I will make a new covenant." But now we got to define covenants. And the thing is, when we look at the definition of covenants, it just means agreement. And it's about six or seven of them, if I'm not mistaken. So you got to understand, you know, and ask the question, which covenant did he, you know, make contrary to the one in Mount Sinai, to the one in the wilderness? Was it the law of circ I mean, the covenant of circumcision? Was it the covenant that he made with Noah? Was it the covenant that he made with David? Was it the Sabbath day covenant? Was it the... um? you know um priestly covenant like which covenant was it uh and so when you understand that i would say then you can see which covenant he's quote unquote bound by which he's pretty much put them all in retrospect and held up his end of the bargain on all of them but it's only one that he got to make renewed because that covenant was broken and so when he make this covenant renewed it still don't mean that he is not bound by it or he We'll go aside from it. We went aside from it, so he actually helping yeah. us by making it new. Yeah. Um. And stuff like that. And that's just briefly, you know, briefly explaining. <clears throat> go ahead, Ah. I wanted to uh, let me back on that. My uh, another reason I feel that the Most High is so faithful is for His own namesake. Like, so we got His, we got our name or His name on us, and so He made the covenant. And so we going out amongst the people with his name on us. So then he going to, you know, do what he do so that the world can know who he is and yeah. what his name is. Yeah. And us being his son and his firstborn, he can do whatever he want. But so we pray for your namesake, revive us, right? For your namesake, do that. So he'll do it for his namesake. It's not that he's bound by the covenant. Yeah, you know I'm saying. But it's just so that the people can know him. That's yeah. what I would say. And to let me back on that, that's 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 where I was going to go with it as well. Um, but all through the scriptures, when we look at the covenants and agreements and everything that he, all the promises that was made, it always is, it's always a contingency. Most High never said, I'm going to do this just because. Even, even when we look at Deuteronomy 28, uh, 1 through 14 says, if you keep these, keep these commandments, you'll be blessed in the city and in the field. But if you don't keep these commandments, all these curses are gonna come upon you. So he's always kept up his end of the deal. So him being bound, um, I would say, I would say yes, but you can't, but he's never went against it for anybody to say, like, oh, well, this shows where the most high didn't have to keep his covenant, because he always kept the covenant. We made an agreement, I kept up my end of the deal, end of the bargain, and now here you go. That's why I wanted, you know, I just had a, a dialogue this morning, you know, a bunch of people were talking about, you know, if God is real, then why would he let children be tortured and sex trafficking and gang violence? And I'm like, it's literally because of generations of us not keeping up our end of the deal. He said, all you got to do is this and you got it. Right. He gave, we, we made that agreement. He gave us what he said he was going to give us and we, we, we messed it up. So land back on what you said, I think the focus is wrong yeah right. we more focused on if the most high gonna keep his commandments or or, or, or if keep the most high is gonna keep his word we should be focused on us keeping the our commandments word. and keeping that's our it. word that's it. you know what i'm saying psalms 24 and 1 says that the earth is the most highest and the fullness thereof and everything in it belong to him so the creator can do whatever he wants period point blank in the discussion like there's nothing we are the creation right so why are we worried about what the creator is going to do 
You know what daddy, I'm saying? Daddy, why you why you get to stay up past 10 o'clock? <laughs> bruh, yeah, bruh. yeah. If you don't take your tail in there, take this belt off. You know what I'm saying? Bro, we, we our focus is wrong. Focus on staying in a place of humility and repentance. And this is no knock to the question, but I'm just saying, and see this see, that's why my twin, bro. Bring it back into focus. Yeah. Like, what are we focusing on? He's always gonna keep his word. He's always gonna stay He's with the covenant. Back. It's always been about that. Yeah. Right. So him keeping his word is gonna do what for you? Because he's still gonna be the most high, still gonna be the highest, still gonna be sitting on the throne, reigning the ruler, still sitting in glory. The family's good. Yeah. Meanwhile, we down here striving, <laughs> praying that it be his will. We escape wrath and destruction. One, two, we make it to the kingdom. Yeah. So shift the focus. Mm -hmm. Shift the focus. One reason why the lesson was brought forth, because you got to be able to show this stuff because people will still be left to wonder. Well, do we? And then make up their own um, answers of guesstimating. Well, I guess he do. I guess he don't. But if we show it that he don't, countless of times, and now it's left up to you to accept it or not. And it's no different from um like when we look at this stuff, when we look at this stuff, um well I hold it. Go ahead, Ma. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Shabbat shalom, I hear a lot of uh I hear a lot of stuff people saying, oh well, it's the curses, oh it's the curses, oh it's the curses. That's fine. The curses have been set in place. They do happen. They are a fact of our history and of our being. But we also have to acknowledge and be aware that um, when asked, I believe it's in Job somewhere, when they were debating on who was going to do what to who, um, when questioned, Asata said, going to a wall in the earth, seeking whom he can devour. Oftentimes, it's not just the curses, but we are vulnerable to our environment and our associations. Mm -hmm. And we can't just always try to find a safety net to blame. Oftentimes, our own behavior and our own associations will rain down bad luck or bad karma on you, you know. And as much as I want to put everything on the devil, oftentimes the devil said, say, dang, I should have thought of that. That was good. I should have. <laughs> I'd have known. <laughs> so do anybody else got anything before we break? Uh, one thing one thing I hit on, I'm pretty sure we all are familiar with it. Um, it was in the... Uh, it was in the comment section and uh, earlier, earlier, way earlier, like when we was back in bringing out current events, Valentine's Day. Is Valentine's Day wicked? You see, you see how you see how it was real. It was real slow at first. And then it was like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Then it was like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, so I'll put it like this. Um, this is one, this is this is one that uh this is what one of the things I wanted to bring out this week, but I ended up having to shift my schedule around because I had some 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 stuff going on earlier in the week. I couldn't get to it on the Thursday podcast. Um Valentine's Day is actually a, a another pagan holiday. Um, and to just to be real brief, because you know, we, we get real deep in depth and we go into scriptures and history and all of that. Um, the gist of it is Valentine's Day was a festival in which they would pretty much everybody would bring their beds to a court to out, out to the court to the courtyard and then take off, trade off big, big, big it's middle of the city or yeah, pass around a little bit of mine, a little bit of yours, a little bit of y'all's. You know, everybody pH balance off next day. <laughs> so that's the, so so yeah, that's the history of Valentine's Day. It it had nothing to do with love. It was uh yeah. You say everybody is sitting, huh? Man, yeah. Tart, tart. Good night. My bad, y'all. <laughs> 
Hey, real quick. So since Everybody when they first it. said that, you said, yeah, it's pagan, right? So is everything pagan bad? Yeah, that's true. Because Israel used that a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like pagan literally just means man-made. So everything that's pagan doesn't just mean it's bad. It doesn't mean man-made it. By that definition, we could say the festival or Purim is pagan. But we keep that. It's in the script because man made the most. I never commanded it, but our ancestors said, "Look, we're gonna keep this." You know what I'm saying? But then you could link the word pagan back also to some people link it back to, um, you know, a lot of things that the European did, like the Celtics and stuff like that. You know, during certain times in European history where they kept all of these um, type of festivals to their gods. So, um, but just for the pure definition. Um, that I've seen anyway, you know, different dictionaries may say different things, but I see it only means something man-made. So everything man-made is not bad, is all I want to say. We got to look into the origins of it and the practices. Go ahead, sis. So um, to that, I would say pagan worship is bad. Gotcha. Yes, yeah, it's worship. And man, Absolutely. Man That's made good. The man-made God. Yeah. Makes sense. That's a great comment. Absolutely. That's good. Change that to some blue and sit it up here with that. Okay. <laughs> the only reason I uh, brought it up is because it bothered me a lot because my uh, one of my granddaughters was over my house um, yesterday and she come in the door and she's excited and she's running around about this day. And Granny, this is gonna be this. I'm gonna get hard. I said, "Well, baby, Granny loves you for uh, 365 days a year, mm -hmm. and I don't need a holiday to do so." I do so for a while. Yeah, okay, but and then in school and da, da 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 da, and for our children, because at school it's pumped up. You know what I'm saying? Everything. And I just yeah. want to know what kind of conversation are you all having with your children? Yeah. Mm -hmm. about these things when they pop up and the school is hyping it up and well you need to bring some valentines and you need to bring what are you saying to your children how are you explaining this menagerie away because you know to me it breeds depression you got a lot of lonely people in a very lonely land and everybody and everything and the tv and all that is saying oh show the one you love this 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 this, this. if you're not in the truth it could breed I mean, some serious, yeah. a lot of people die on Valentine's Day. It ain't no joke. It is really embedded, and a lot of feelings get hurt, and a lot of children are confused because it's taught as a part of your curriculum. Okay, yeah. come February, I got to rush out of body Valentine's, and if somebody in that classroom don't get one. Yeah. I got my heart broke on Valentine's Day one time. I tell y'all for real. <laughs> Y'all laughing. I'm serious. I was crying. I was crying. I was crying. <laughs> I was crying the can on. This is why, uh, Eva, real quick. This is why I feel like, uh, and I'm going to just be transparent. Like, my children, right, let me speak on my own, will be, will be some of the strongest Israelites in truth. And this is why I'm saying this. Because they're exposed to both sides. Yeah. There's a joint custody thing going on where one week they with me, one week they in a house that don't know nothing, don't want nothing to do with Elohim, right? So while right now they're, you know, the clay, they coming up, they being molded, they dealing with a lot of different emotions. So while Yah is grooming them, he's grooming mom and dad too, because we got to learn how to navigate and deal with them righteously within that, right? So, yeah, we want to bring them up in a certain light, but at the same time, it's kind of, um, it's it's kind of cool for them to be like at school dealing with people who don't know nothing about Yah, and they're like, "Why am I dealing with this? I don't understand why they can't." and some days they were their tassels of school. Some day, some days they don't, whatever, whatever. But but being exposed to both sides, it's like sparring. So when they become of a, a full age and they get the full understanding, 
is going to make them that much more impactful when they dealing with people of the world. That's that's not saying nothing against children who are bought, brought up in complete true homes. I'm not knocking at all. I'm just saying that for for the children who are who I would say at right now are in a more vulnerable state in the end is going to make them, the, the anointing on them that much heavier because of the understanding they will have being on both sides. You know what I mean? Um, because me and my daughter have long winded conversations. I mean, when she come back, when I pick her up on Fridays, from the time she get in the car, boom, dad, 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 dad. I, and I, I love it though. Her, her zeal for y'all, like I just, I be wanting to cry sometimes. I mean, that's amazing. Yeah. Cause I, I, I just, I just do my best with them. She's got her own heart, her own desire to, you know what I'm saying? Like I ain't gotta beat it. I ain't gotta do all of that. It's, it's there. So it's like for kids who, who can hear me right now, if, if you're, if you're in a two, two houses back and forth in between, right? just stay strong like stay strong and don't waver it's going to get better right now the enemy will be on on your head or or the test and trials y'all might feel like y'all don't understand and it might be real heavy he just trying to get y'all right now because he know that y'all can be molded right because when y'all get of a certain age y'all will be solid in in, in the faith in which y'all believe and it, it's going to be a lot harder for him to shift y'all so he's trying to get y'all now he trying to get y'all right now. I don't even know who that's for. I don't even know why that just came out, but I just felt like it had to come out because I know I know my daughter is in a, is in a is in a real vulnerable state right now, dealing with a lot of girls that's dealing with a lot of different spirits, a lot of different spirits. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, like these girls is only these boys and girls only twelve years old, talking about things, doing things. And I wasn't even thinking about at that age. Like, I, 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 I wasn't knowing that. You know what I mean? Like, it, the, the advancement of the youth today is beyond what I ever would have thought. And I, and, I, and I know the technology plays a major part in that because even, even my generation, we were, we were shielded from things. We were still exposed to some things. But, I mean, now they could pick a tablet up, type in anything. YouTube and just learn about anything. So it's like it's a it's a catch twenty two. It's a gift and a curse. It's a gift and a curse. Yeah, I like I like that because the cup because the because the the, the the covering is is not there. For example, won't expose the young girl's name, but but one of the main young girls that my daughter has an issue with, right? She's advanced, she's fast, this, that, and the third. Her, my, my daughter just told me this morning that her father's not present. He's not in the house. He's not around. Oh, well, there you go. She has no covering. No covering. So she just, she, her mom, grandma, they probably around, but there's no male there. There's no king in the house. It makes total sense. So I have to tell her, listen, learn what you need to learn to pass. They're not teaching you truth. But learn what you need to learn to pass. Right. Right. Take advantage of the of the, the friendships and the relationship that you have there. But don't put yourself in, in, a, in a space where you get in trouble because you got a heart like me, right? So if her friend finna fight my daughter the type, she gonna jump in. She might swing first. She definitely swing it first. You know. But I'm like, nah, I don't do that. Because what I, what what happened is they might not do that for you. You get suspended. They don't get suspended because you threw the first punch. And, and now me and you have to have a certain conversation. It's cool for you to finish it, but we ain't starting it. So like, so like with them trying to just navigate through everything, especially with the temptations that they got, it's a little harder than it was when Daddy was coming up. You know what I mean? Like, nah, nah. I, that's good. I ain't trying to be long. I ain't trying to be long winded. Y'all know me, but. Yeah, but but it's all facts because and then one thing I gotta I gotta just just throw out there to encourage everybody is, you know, for everybody in this room, everybody online, everybody who tunes in, our children have a righteous example that we didn't have coming up. You know, even even the children that that, that even the, the, for the mothers that who where the fathers aren't in the picture, you know, what I mean, they got they still 
serve as a righteous example when y'all bringing y'all kids here your children are seeing righteous men leading in righteous manners and things like that you know what i'm saying and like he said the world ain't teaching this they teaching against it you know what i'm saying so you know i was told that one of my children is struggling in school because i'm taking away everything that they grew up knowing and the only thing that's been taken away is Christmas, Thanksgiving, Easter, Valentine's Day. You know what I'm saying? So basically, this person is saying, you know, because the because the children don't celebrate wicked holidays, they 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 doing bad in school or struggling in school. This is how this is how deep the teeth of the dragon is in our is in our people. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I'm saying? Like Ema said, like, yeah, like, 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 like already I said, you know what I'm saying? We got to continuously just be that righteous example. We could talk to them all day. Think about when we was kids. You can't, you can't tell me nothing. I'm not hearing nothing you're talking about. I hear you and I'm going to listen because you said it, but I'm watching you. You know what I'm saying? A lot of things that I did coming up, I knew was wrong because I was told it was wrong, but I saw y'all do this. So I'm gonna be a lot more comfortable doing this. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? If if I'm in here every Shabbat talking about don't break the Shabbat, come here at two and stay till sundown so you don't break the Shabbat. But every Shabbat I'm stopping at UDF on the way, grabbing some Snickers and stuff. I'm breaking the Shabbat. Right. So when my kids get older, they're gonna be like, you ain't supposed to break the Shabbat, but hold on real quick. We go get these donuts real quick. You know what I'm saying? So it's all about, it's all about setting that righteous example. Uh, we gotta do that. I just wanted to on this same topic um and what Bach just stated as far as like pin um blaming basically like a child's grades behavior all kind of stuff on um really just removing stuff that contradict you know Mm -hmm. and keeping them safe i think um another challenge with that is that it is reality like it can yeah. be actually right like it could be that because removing these things that the person grew up with and not necessarily that they grew up with them but they're outsiders meaning everybody in the class maybe but one or two people is doing all this mm -hmm. stuff you know so they're isolated like yeah. every time something comes around that's more of you know those are the holidays and the things that in school you get to look forward to because you might not have to do work that day or right. you got a program yeah parties all kind of stuff so when that happens they're excluded um so it probably would make it could easily contribute to a person's performance a child's performance in school on a daily basis it honestly could even contribute to a child becoming depressed mm -hmm. so you know we're adults and we know why we're doing this stuff um and we try our best to like put it inside and explain it to our children but that doesn't mean that they're not going to feel that way yeah so i think that um one of the things is doing our best to be mindful that they have people you know and it's not necessarily a trade-off because they're at school five days a week with you know these children but um you know they have children here that they can play with that are like-minded and then really beefing up our customs yeah and the celebrations of the most high that he has set out like the feast days and things yeah. like that and creating new memories so that they have something to exchange and look forward to that is right um but then not but just not even doing that knowing that you know if they're in that system um it is going to be tough for them so we mm -hmm. do have to continuously think about different ways and different things mm -hmm. so that they're not impacted that way because Performance is one thing, but you know, you don't want a child to grow up kind of depressed or um 
or regretting even being doing what they're doing because they will right. turn the opposite yeah. way and yeah. have nothing to do with it. And right. the goal is to get that to be inside of them so yeah. that they it's in their heart right. and they want to serve the most out of the way that they should. Right. Um, I was just going to say as far as like schools and um, having to participate and deal with the customs, sometimes it's just a conversation with the teacher um, because some kids aren't going to speak up about it. They, they're not just those type of kids like my son. He going to tell his teacher, I don't celebrate Christmas. But she might not be so vocal at it. So sometimes it takes the parent to say, um, is there another classroom they can go to? Or can we not call it a Christmas party? What is going on? You have to be very um, out, outright with what is going on at the school. Like they had a Super Bowl party instead of Valentine's Day. And I was okay with that, you know, because everybody and they go to a school where it's completely diverse. So a lot of the kids don't even celebrate, you know, so it just makes it, it makes it easier for us, but not all schools. Some schools are very Christian Christmas, you know, so it really takes the parent to be proactive and make and seeing what's going on. Okay. It's a holiday coming up. What y'all doing? You know, Halloween, they didn't go to school because I'm not about to have my kids and not be in uniform. You know what I mean? Not feel sometimes you got to Keep them home so they don't feel so stuff like that. This mental health day. Yeah. Hey, before you go, sis. So, at my daycare, cause y'all, um, you said your school, your kids' school had a little Super Bowl or Bengals party. So we kind of had the same thing, but they merged it. Like they had the hearts with the Bengal prints on it, like. <laughs> Can shimmy y'all? He just doing the bingles, and I'm like, let me see what y'all got going. <laughs> and they had a but I was like, nah, man, like he good. And they like, oh, I feel sorry. I'm like, he four years old. <laughs> I don't know what's going on? Give him a piece of paper, let him color. Yeah, like yeah. Hey, look, they tried to do uh, they tried to merge the two like Constantine. Yeah, like Constantine merged Christianity and pay. Yeah, right. <laughs> they put bingles helmets on the hearts. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I was just going to, you know, layer back on what Sis was saying. You do have to be very involved in your kids' school, and you got to talk to these teachers. And because I know with this one, especially with her starting a year early, and you know, she advanced in a lot of ways, but she was still only four when she started the kindergarten. Everybody else got a year or two ahead of her. So she, when they passing out snacks and stuff, she just sees snacks. Right. We eat marshmallows at home, but they the vegan ones. Right. So if they offering her marshmallows at school, she knows she can eat marshmallows, but she's not thinking about that. Yeah, right. So I stay in constant contact with her teacher. Her teacher is really good about um, texting me when they get ready to have parties and stuff. So, you know, this year they didn't call off school and all the districts for the Super Bowl for Monday, but Tuesday they going to go to time that party. She's going to be home on Tuesday too. Right. Yeah, and you, it's just about not really trying to be in competition with <laughs> not trying to be in competition with what the world has going on, but it don't take nothing to, even if you got to work, come home and Bake some cookies with the kids or something, you know, make them feel special. Take some individual time and let them know, you know, I see you. We do our own thing. You don't, you don't follow the world. Raise your kids. That's it. Just raise your kids, bro. Just because they leave with you don't mean you raise them. <laughs> um, I was going to um, say that the most important thing with um, having children is talking to them um, and, and asking questions, especially if they are of the age where they can speak with you because a lot of times parents don't talk to their kids. They just yell at them or 
speak at them and don't really say, well, how are you feeling? What's going on? Like everybody's saying, take a mental health day or whatnot. And this, that, and third, because, you know, we were going to school, we didn't have the things that these kids, you know, the children have now for like Super Bowl day, you know, snow day. We get an inch of snow, school was open. They get a dust in school clothes. You know, it's like, then you put them in front of a TV and tablets and stuff and you're not monitoring what they're watching and it's like okay they can be doing whatever because you have to make sure that you're paying attention to everything that they're doing because like it was already stated that if you're not monitoring you're not paying attention they can click an ad or click on something be exposed to something that they're not supposed to even be seeing and then it goes by the action that they see that they care just and they be like well, what is this and what is that so you have to be very careful and then it's a lot of siblings that have older siblings that exposes the younger siblings to things that they shouldn't see as well you know so it's like well how did he or she know how to do that well my sister or my brother called me then the sister brother nah, uh, that wasn't me and it's like how did they know how to do this when they don't have a cell phone they don't have a tablet you had to have talked them because they don't have these things in their possession so you have had to talk them this so you know what i'm saying we have to be as everybody already said we have to be very careful and pay close attention to what our children are being taught as what well, as well as in the house as well as outside the house because like we say it it's kids inside the house that can teach them as well as the children outside so you know what i'm saying we just all got to be on one page when it comes to that good stuff so, so, so let me back off what sister right here said about um you know just being careful with the children with holidays so my son he recently started his after school program well, and- one second you kind one, one second sir. hey y'all we trying to um we trying to listen in to our comments y'all we almost done you know you're everybody antsy but we almost done all right cool and as soon as we get there he see by the time of day stuff and i'm kind of you know kind of Proud of them, but disappointed at the same time. Let me just say that he kind of destroyed their stuff, so we had a little talk when we got home. Uh-huh. But I explained to him why he can't destroy their stuff. We know it's pagan, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So the teachers knew, so they're like, "Okay, you see, he don't celebrate holidays." This and that third, they're like, "What can we do for him?" I'm like, "Y'all can give him, you know, the same craft, but something different. That's not Valentine's Day." You know what I'm saying? And ever since he made a friend who asked a bunch of questions now. So it's conversation starter. Mm-hmm. All right, so we just gonna go ahead and break. Um what about 10 minutes? 10 minute break, y'all. Shalom. Did you did you listen to that joint? Did you listen to that joint? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, how well Elohim over every single thing. Over every single thing. Over every single thing. Yeah, how well Elohim over every single thing. Over every single thing. Over every single thing. Yeah, how well Elohim over every single thing. Over every single thing. Over every single thing. Yeah, how well Elohim over every single thing. Over every single thing. Over every single thing. Yeah, how well Elohim over every single thing. Call on your hour shot. We know it's power in your name. We get few enough a super from the wound that go astray. I'm that body spirit. I'm the son of Elohim. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All praises to the king. 
upon my brother's people, y'all reminded me of K. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All praises to the king. Yeah. I'm my brother's yeah. people, y'all yeah. reminded me of K. Let me start this thing off right. Right. Darkness versus light. Light. Eating on the scriptures like a Chinese man eat rice. Ooh. Spitting out this morsel like I don't have an appetite. Yeah. Everybody yeah. ate bits of the word sound bite. Get it? Boy in the ribbon. I'm not talking Kermit when I say I got it down to a T. You move like a dentist. Always in somebody's mouth when they talk and speak in the truth. We're moving the wizard. Teeth white from the milk, eyes red from the wine. Yeah. Never faded the finish. Told the white yeah. feet that I wanted 10 kids. I was told getting replenished. Then it's the society. society. Adolescent. Then it's the menace. When we adolescent with the law towards, tell us not to add to or diminish. diminish. Philosophy, I am not feeling. feeling. Cause you take away less subtraction. Traction. You add two like the gremlins. Gremlins. Everybody wanna be gorillas. Me. So they sell like the glue that's within it. Me. You dogs got the blue from the Bible. Uh. Don't have a clue what's up in it. Nah. My people we try in the furnace, furnace. You know they've been wanting the grillers, grillers. My people with spirits we sick. Huh. In the kingdom, not ultimate clinic. Huh. Penicillin, can't get you healing. I want this off the top, penicillin. Tassel game, spirits we led. Always in line, mechanical pencils. Me. Yeah. I'm about to go left like a snigger. Commercial say eat it when you acting different. Me. I didn't relate to the candy bars. They gon' twist your words up like twizzlers. Yeah. Yeah, how well Elohim over every single day. Y'all just dealing with a broken contrite spirit. Yeah, how the hell don't he know over every single day? On my knees, asking Yahuwah, can they please forgive us? A son of Elohim, a son of man is coming, coming. And men are super stubborn, God is opposite of ugly. A son of Elohim, the kingdom looking lovely. Echo. Outside of this dog, growling like a hungry stomach, multiplying fruitfully. Nation fertile as a bunny, funny, evil till it backwards. Who the bit the love of money on the highway to heaven? Don't be a crash dummy, never high minded, but keep my head up like my nose running. Me, stay in love with us. All right, let's play around a little bit, y'all. Stepping in Jerusalem, moving like a hoodlum Fabricated Jews fleeing when no one pursuing them Wrapped like saran, oops I'm in aluminum Fire come down from heaven, who gon' raise the, who gon' raise the Stepping in Jerusalem, moving like a hoodlum Fabricated Jews fleeing when no one pursuing them Wrapped like saran, oops I'm in aluminum Fire come down from heaven, who gon' raise the roof on them Eating on some chips, not the one they wanna implement Shout out to Yahweh Almighty, omnipotent. Shout out to my wifey, beautiful and decorative. Now I understand what a ten is. Wimbledon, armor of Elohim, looking very militant. Walking in my roots like a pair of dirty Timberlands. We don't rock them no more. Shout out to my op cold, all this heat break drip. We gon' need a mop though. Rules in the nation, keep me looking clean. Yahoo the style, Bezalel, Raymond, wear toes and tees. Inspired by tour, do it for a king and queen. Custom made, handmade, and they charge a good fee. Let me catch y'all booze up to speed. Like a pet ball was thrown to me Diamond in the rough Like I'm playing in the major league Let the land heal Clean it up OCD Cold dash ground you walking on Take the shoes off your feet Let me catch y'all bruise up the speed Like a pet ball was thrown to me Diamond in the rough Like we playing in the major league We bare arms Cause it's nothing but tricks Under Satan's sleeve Y'all said if you wanna be a free man Lean on me Call that sounds for the nation yeah. We'll take any beat remake yeah. it Offer it up for oblation, man oblation. Stop playing drag a wicked demon Straight through the pages Skirt. With the word cause Skirt. it's concrete. concrete That's a different type of foundation Lay Laid at the seat. seat I say the word make me complete. complete It also is my meat. my meat And if my brother feeling low He, he can, can lean, lean on, on me, me. Yeah. I got Bruce Spitter yeah. on my left Or I'll be on my there right go. With Yahweh got okay. enough We are not afraid to fight I speak against Ooh. the wickedness Ooh. The enemy and his crafty tricks Trick. Satan get behind me. me You are not stopping not it's the a movement of your how a shot our oncoming apocalypse yeah. raining down fire and brimstone with a darker sun we already run we say the ancient the days ancient you better days. serve in the day i'm just trying to get saved to get put saved. your soul in the hands of the most high he won't lead you astray you this that end time move you better learn what we saying i possess the slayers 
but they ain't found guilty. Not guilty. And like the water implement, the system is filthy. System is filthy. This country ain't for us. They don't see us as people over nope. 200 years later, and we still aren't equal. Malcolm X and Marcus Garvey scripts say no man can buy you. Lock nope. yourself in prison, try to kill that spirit inside you. Tell us protest like MLK, but they killed him too. My best advice to you is to wake up, you're a brute. Man, now, but you celebrate the fourth like some coons. Wake up from this days, or rush your spirit is doomed. From George Ford to Trayvon Martin, they all died with no cause. Avoid police brutality by keeping your house boss. We a cursed people, ancestors got off track. But we can change that all if we just turn back. You my brother, you my sister, it's all peace and shalom. Just comply with the most high so we can all make it home. I be... <laughs> Look, Tassel Gang is right now. Yeah, what do you say? Diamond in the rough, like we playing in the major league. <laughs> Codex ground, you walking on? Yeah, the monster reloaded. Why don't y'all take a look at that sign up there? See what it says? Cash for your home? You know what that is? It's Bill Billboard. What are y'all, Amos and Andy? Are you stepping and he's fetching? I'm talking about the message, what it stands for. It's called gentrification. It's what happens when the property value of a certain area is brought down. Huh? You listening? Yeah. To bring the property value down. They can buy the land at a lower price. Then they move all the people out, raise the property value, and sell it at a profit. Now, what we need to do is we need to keep everything in our neighborhood, everything black. Black owned with black money. Just like the Jews, the Italians, the Mexicans, and the Koreans do. Ain't nobody from outside bringing down the property value. It's these folk shooting each other and selling that crack rock and shit. Well, how you think the crack rock gets into the country? We don't own any planes. We don't own no ships. Well, we are not the people who are flying and floating that shit in here. I know every time you turn on the TV, that's what you see. Black people oh, yeah. Yeah. selling the rock, right. pushing the rock, yeah. pushing the rock. Yeah, I know. But that wasn't a problem as long as it was here. It wasn't a problem until it was in Iowa and it showed up on Wall Street where there are hardly any black people. Now, if you want to talk about uh, guns, why is it that there's a gun shop on almost every corner in this community? Why? Tell you why. For the same reason that there's a liquor store on almost every corner in the black community. Why? They want us to kill ourselves. You go out to Beverly Hills, you don't see that shit. But they want us to kill ourselves. Yeah, the best way you can destroy a people, you take away their ability to reproduce themselves. Who is it that's dying out here on these streets every night? Y'all. Young brothers like yourselves. What am I supposed to do? Fool roll up, try to smoke me? I'm gonna shoot the motherfucker if he don't kill me first. You're doing exactly what they want you to do. You have to think, young brother, about your future.
we dwelling in flipped on us for ruin. Flipping. Used to have good times like sheep band music. Let go. Leah cares behind new state of mind. The new family reunion is gathering at a funeral viewing. Man. I want to be like some of my ancestors, like the one that's seen the land. The land. Joshua Caleb, don't stop me from moving. Jerusalem. What about unbiblical, not biased? The young always inherit the revolution. I'm Huey P. Newton. Facts. Lifestyle we living in. Can't wait to exit out. out. Mankind went from being potty trained to a potty mouth. Sucker. Literally from pull ups to now we pulling up. Pulling up. Don't let that pride rise. Nope. Cause death coming down plain sight like skydive. Can't even catch a plane. Nope. Coronavirus get contact through a high five. Or in your area. Yeah, I pray that you hearing us. Psalm 91, you my refuge and it won't draw nigh. Keep the laws of the most high. Stay here, yeah. Stay here. I don't wanna rest my soul. Stay here. I don't wanna rest my soul. Nation wicked, always been about power, cashless society. No more change for a dollar. Took a couple dollars, got a sex change. Man, the woman, same sex marriages approved by the judge. Gavel. All these proverbs, let the world know. We the children, this black color, Afro, even light skin. The system keeps sketching up jokes and living color. Y'all can do them like Jada Pickett, put a chain on them up. It's funny how rules can turn their back on their back. Turn right back around when you need something from the fact. And he ain't never feed. Plays the allegiance. Always. He can't say you because he's black. He part of the reason. How say time got them chemtrails altering seeds. Fact. Now I'm giving you some meat. Come bring me the seeds. Let's eat. Recipe to the kingdom tour. I'm a receipt.
Hey, long. Oh, we've been on mute, y'all. Oh, oh, was y'all? Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, was, was thou deaf? It turned down low, low. Turn, turn, turn down low. Thou servant has been deaf to the words of the Almighty. Dang, y'all. We was on mute this whole time. <laughs> She said you got to at least run the congregational one back. Or you can join the congregation. That's an option. What'd you say, Hanan? Or for $9.99, <laughs> you can get it off Wish. You got the whole album. Hey, it's going to a show body, too. Put the cash app on the Oh, we gonna go with the flow. What else we got? That was it? Yeah. Oh, 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 Hey, I just so happen to look down like I'm hearing either it's low, low, or this. I'm like, what? I look over at the mic, it's blink. Any any request outside of the songs that we've done? No encores. Any request? You know? Okay. Okay, cool. So we can at least give them that. Shimma was kind of interconnected with. <laughs> All right, y'all. So because we had it on mute, we'll go ahead and um, per request, we'll go ahead and um, throw something in there for y'all. Yeah, they can hear us now. Or you can go on Craigslist and get it for eight dollars. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 
Stop, bro. I will not stop. Just that way it come last week. Now what? What y'all gotta say? What y'all gotta say? Hey. Hey. Y'all couldn't hear online. Y'all hear it now. Yeah. I put my hoodie on because I thought I was safe. Good night. Hey. Hey, do that this one now, Rock, y'all. I ain't never ever. Hey. Hey. I ain't never ever. Hey. Take it right here. 
Check D. On behalf of Ahoro, Moray Yash, all of this right now. If it was muted and you missed it, I can't even say I'm sorry. You should have been in the building. Get here next week. Maybe we'll give you an encore. Support. Shout out to all the listeners. We love y'all. Tune in next Shabbat, 2 p.m., where we go hard. Um, get you something that'll change your life. We love y'all. We thank all the support. Be sure to cash out Israel now if you want to donate. What's that cash out tag? Israel now, two W's. It's, it's from Bang. Hold on. Let me make sure the board can see it. It's right up there on the board. Two W's if you want to support the ministry. Doing great things. Get you some truth. We love y'all. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.